And wasn't that some game between the USA and Finland for the gold medal? It certainly was, Lloyd, and we thought uh, after Friday's inspirational victory over the Soviet Union that it'd be really difficult for a team to continue that momentum, but Team USA certainly did against Finland, and they won the gold medal in convincing fashion in one of the most exciting hockey games you'll ever see. Impressive goaltending of 33-year-old Jorma Valtanen kept Finland in the game in the early going. Johnson has a shot from close range. Valtanen makes a skate save, and the veteran of 250 international games really was playing well in the early going. The first goal was scored by Pervari, his fifth goal of the Olympics at 9.20 of the first period. On the replay, you'll see the shot by Pervari. It beats Jim Craig on the glove side. Leinen and Litma getting assists. one nothing for Finland. Then in the second period, Steve Kristoff, University of Minnesota, intercepts a pass, the backhand into the net, past Valtanen at 4.39. Team USA killing off a penalty to Ramsey here. Great forechecking by Bratton and also Kristoff, and they score, it's 1-1. Finland took the lead for the second time less than two minutes later on a power play deflected by Leononen in front his sixth goal of the Olympic competition and Finland led 2-1. Christian number 23 passes to Verkota got away there from Curry and also Susi to tie it up at 2-2. There's Christian passing to Phil Verkota and he beats Valtanen and it's 2-2. Christian also helped set up the eventual winner of backhand drive. Mark Johnson passing to Rob McClanahan. And McClanahan scores. Suranimi left McClanahan all alone in front of the net. And this is at 6.05 of the third period. Christian keeping it in. Johnson to McClanahan. And Team USA goes in front by one goal. Now the Americans scored a shorthanded goal late in the period to make it 4-2. Kristoff in front of the net along with Mark Johnson the puck to Mark Johnson and he scores his fifth goal of the Olympic Games at 16 25 of the third period great intensity and an exciting game today at the Olympic Fieldhouse Johnson one of the outstanding performers from Team USA gets that extra goal and the Americans win the gold medal and it's uh, you know, uh, 1960 was the last time the Team USA won the gold medal at the Olympic Games. There it was the Christians, Bill Christian, and Roger, his brother. Today, it was Bill's son, Dave Christian, getting an assist on the tying goal and also an assist on the winning goal scored by Rob McClanahan. They were dancing in the streets, and no question about it, they'll be dancing all night, screaming and yelling. And it's a great moment for amateur hockey, a great moment for Team USA as they defeat Finland by a score of 4-2. to two. Lloyd, and uh, as you mentioned, we're looking forward now to the next big game, the Soviets and Sweden. Just one more thing we want to say about that uh, Team USA, Bernie. They had a terrific hockey tournament here because they tied one game and they won everything else. They didn't lose a single game. That's right. And, uh, Speaks you know, well for college hockey in the USA, doesn't it? It certainly does. And also Team Canada, although they weren't in the medal contention, a very young team, a comparable program to Team USA, and Herb Brooks and the Canadian coaching staff, too, they all did just a great job to keep the enthusiasm and, uh, you know, the interest. Because every day you'd go to the rink, and if Canada was playing or Team USA, there was a great deal of interest. Well, now, a lot of people have been talking about why the U.S. beat the Soviets and why Canada couldn't beat the Soviets, at least, uh, you know, among our own little group particularly. Uh, the strategy employed by Canada seemed to be, from my layman's eye at least, somewhat different, somewhat different from that employed by the uh, United States. It seemed that the United States were out to check them, break up the Soviet plays. The Canadians, uh, in the first two periods at least, managed to skate with them and were leading. And then in the third period, they, uh, they seemed to lose their legs even though they were well conditioned. What's your view of the difference in the Very, strategies? Well, yes, uh, I, I think the strategy is a lot alike because uh, the two teams like to uh, skate and uh, Team Canada, I think uh, you'll recall, we said they wouldn't be blown out, they wouldn't be outskated or outworked in the game at all. Uh, it's very difficult to forecheck the Soviets because 
they have people like Balderas dancing at the center line just waiting for passes, so you have to skate with them, um, not really play your position, but you have to cover all areas of the ice, and uh, Team USA did it just a little better than Team Canada. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Bertie. So now we're looking at the uh, silver and bronze medals in hockey. Pick your team. It's the Soviet Union or Sweden. And coming up, we'll have live action from the Olympic arena. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic network. Canada's bobsled team is a classic example of teamwork, combining intensive training and determination to compete with the world's best. Olympic bobsled run at Lake Placid, where Canada's team is competing. Hello, I'm Alfred Powis. There are 39,000 Canadians on our team at Miranda. They do the jobs and learn the skills that lead to fresh opportunities for Canada. The Miranda team digs the mines, drills the wells, harvests the trees, and makes the products that have helped turn Canada into a top international competitor. Like Canada's fine young athletes, we're proud to be Canadians, competing worldwide. Esso salutes the savers. Esso salutes Chris Brown for switching to a friction-reducing oil that can save him gasoline. And the Erskins for keeping their wheels aligned to save on tire wear. And the Adolfs for changing their air filter regularly so their car can run more smoothly and efficiently. People like these look to Esso because they know Esso research results in products and services that can help them save. Esso, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. Well, a second mortgage would do the job, but it's not really to your advantage. Your money. Scotiabank has people that can help you handle it. People who understand your needs. Scotiabank experience. Take advantage of it. Because today, your money needs all the help it can get. Scotiabank. Everything you need. You know, I never would have thought of that. Well, we have officials out in the ice at the Olympic Arena, Bernie. No teams yet, uh, neither the Soviets nor the Swedes. I wonder if we might take just a moment to talk about this Swedish team, because uh, not too many of us have had an opportunity to view them as often as we have the Soviets. That's right, Lloyd. And you look at uh, the number of players that have left Sweden to join NHL teams, uh, Hedberg and Nielsen, Thomas Gradin, Lars Lindgren, uh, they've Kent Nielsen in Atlanta. They've lost a lot of their outstanding players, yet their developing program in Sweden has just been outstanding. They've come up with uh, some outstanding youngsters, and, uh, well, in goal particularly. Uh, you look at uh, Pelle Lindbergh, who has been drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers. He has simply been outstanding in goal in this Olympic competition, Pelle Lindbergh, and I think he'll be a key member of the Swedish team today here at the Olympic Fieldhouse against the Soviet Union. And we see now, Lloyd, the two, play the two teams lining up at their respective blue lines. Right, Bernie. The Swedes and the Soviet Union, so we're going back to the Olympic arena for uh, the last hockey game you'll see in this Olympic hockey tournament. A great call, play-by-play, -play, the first round there, uh, Ron. It's been a heavy day for you, but here we go. Ron Roosh and Tom Watt. All right, thanks very much, Lloyd. The teams are on the ice. This one's pretty clear-cut. If the Soviets win the game, they get the silver medal. It'll be Sweden with the bronze. The reverse will hold if the Swedes win this one. There are our officials. Bernie Haley of Canada is on the ice. Andre. Kapulka of Poland and Stefan Enciu of Romania. They are the officials for the game. Now, if these two teams tie, the Soviets would get the silver medal. Now, we've said a number of times that the Soviets have not played that well in this tournament. It's not one of their vintage years, and it is quite possible that the Swedish team could, in fact, win the hockey game. They played a great game against the United States. The United States had to come back with a last-minute goal by Bill Baker in order to tie Sweden. So here we go. Well, the Soviets, too, I think a big question. They're starting Mishkin in goal. Trechak not in the goal after starting poorly against the United States. And I think what you have to look for from the Soviets today, after losing that game to the United States, are they going to be down? You know, are they really going to try to win a silver medal, or is the only thing that matters to them gold? We'll see later on in the hockey game. There's Pelle Lindbergh. 
Bernie just talked about him. He's from the Hammerby Club in Sweden. Just a 20 year old, 5'8, 155 pounds. There's Tretiak on the bench. And when was the last time Vladislav Tretiak did not start a game? Well, we can remember back to the Challenge Cup last year in the third and deciding game when Mushkin started. Over the line, a two on one. Arlamov getting set. It rolls to the goal mouth and down goes. Lindbergh right off the face off and center ice a quick two on one and not a very good shot by Harlamov. Lindbergh was able to cover up. Lindbergh they tell me and uh, you were there Tom played very very well in the Asbestia tournament this year. Excellent. From the face off Alberg picked up the puck but uh, he they had an encroachment in the face off circle so they'll do it again very well at Rude Pravi shut out Canada's national team two to nothing in Prague earlier this year from the face off there's a hard shot from the blue line taken by Kazanov now there's a shot they're just winding up and firing that was finished off that let that one go behind the net now it's cleared out in front by Mihailov and ends up out at center ice and Fedisov is back to get it. Force checking is Alberg. It's cleared out to center ice. Harlamov coming back into his own end. Right on top of him is Holmgren at center ice. Harlamov over the line now. Harlamov stick handling and he fired that over the top of the net. It rolls out in front. They score right off the top. It is Petrov who put it into the net in the goal mouth area and the Soviets have just really got the Swedes just flat footed here. Harlamov making a good move, goes down, fakes the shot the first time over the net, but it bounces loose. Harlamov stays with it, tips it in front. Petrov just cruising in front of the net, puts it behind Lindbergh for the Soviets to go ahead one to nothing. Face off on the far side, now it's taken by Erickson, but he can't control it. Now Waltin shooting it out to center ice. And back in his own zone for the Soviets, that's Vasiliev. Vasiliev over for Starikov. Out at center ice and down over the line. Balderas. Balderas out in front. A quick shot and a good blast there by Schluchtov. Behind the net, it goes into the corner. Digging in after it there, Skortsov. Here's the shot and another hard shot. And the puck rolls loose out in front of the net. The Soviets have got the pressure on again. Schluchtov in the corner. Big Schluchtov, 6-3. Rolls it out in front of Balderas. Fanned on it. Vasiliev at the blue line. Try to clear it in front. It goes to the far boards and Norberg has it. Norberg clearing it down into the Soviet end. Behind the net for the Soviets, it's Vasiliev, and it's called for a face-off back in the Swedish end of the ice on the icing. Petrov from Harlamov at 36 seconds, and the Soviets lead the silver medal game one to nothing. The veteran Petrov on the Soviet bench, perhaps his last Olympic tournament, perhaps even his last game for the national team, because in talking to people around the tournament, they think that this line, this experienced line, Petrov, Harlamov, and Mikhailov, this may be their last hurrah. From the face off now taken out at center ice, cleared ahead over the blue line. Anderson turning with it, shooting it out to center ice. Here come the Swedes now. Down over the line comes Moline. Moline trying to split the defense. And he was unable to, and the Soviets come roaring right back. Down over the line. Makarov and his shot is blocked at the defense. Buck rolls behind the net. Cleared in against the boards. They're taken by Erickson. Erickson tried to hit the line. Alexander Golikov's in there, but it's offside. Face off outside the Swedish end. We played a minute 52 here in the hockey game. One nothing for the Soviets. There you see Lindbergh. There, there's the goal. Getting behind Lindbergh. Not much chance on that one. There's a shot by Harlamov. It bounces back. Harlamov partially fanned on it, but he got it over for Petrov and into the net. And they'll redo that face off. As you see Petrov on the bench. Petrov, a member of the Central Red Army. He's been with the national team since 1968. He's got eight world championship gold medals and two Olympic golds, and he's going for a silver in this one. Doesn't know much about losing hockey games, that's for sure. Buck is in the corner now, in there after it, and picking it up is Lebedev. He clears it around the far side, now it's the center ice off Lebedev's stick, and Prudhoff was unable to get it. Now against the guards, Alberg cleared out at center ice from Maltsev. And over the line, four checking on the play is Krutov. He's a great young hockey player, Krutov. He's four checking again. Carrying the puck is Naslin. Over to this side, taken by Weinstock. Weinstock, Jonsson at center ice. Two line pass called on that offside pass. And we'll have another face off. As we say, Alberg, he was second in the Swedish scoring race last year. That's the Swedish Elite League, as they call it. To Anders Kaller who is now playing with the New York Islanders. He missed the scoring championship by just two points. They play a 36-game schedule there. He had 45 points, including 28 goals. 
Alberg number 12 for the Swedes. The puck is cleared out over center ice down into the Soviet zone. Rough pass. And out at center ice, hit the heel of the skate of Balderas. Waltz in, down in his own end. At center ice now, cleared right onto the stick. Good move there by Starikov. He's reacted to that very, very well. Now Harlamov. Harlamov to the line. And trailing is Mihailov. He's in with that puck. Gets it. The quick shot of his. And it was right on, and Lindbergh made the save. Here's Harlamov digging for it on the far board. This line's really buzzing around here. Here's Harlamov. Harlamov into the slot. Gets it. He shoots. Oh, what a save there by Lindbergh. A bouncing puck in front of the net. Now it's Erickson. Erickson to the far boards. Then the return pass goes right by him, and it's center ice at Starikov. To Mihailov to Petrov, to Mihailov down behind the net. Now Lindbergh out of the net, flips it along the glass. On the far side, trying to keep it in his facility up. It comes out to center ice. There's a good pass over the line now. Here's Moline getting set, passed it over to the side of the net, out in front. That one intended there. And the puck is shot wide of the net. It bounces behind the net. Now out in front again. A shot right through the goal crease. On the far boards, Mihailov chops it into the corner. Vasiliev. Ahead for Petrov, over on this side for Starikov. Starikov leaving it for Vasiliev along the boards and down into the Swedish zone. In after it, Balderas, he's muscled in against the boards. Balderas with the puck again. And Erickson going to move in there now and try and hold it. Pin it in there as they poke away at it. It's called for a faceoff to the right of the Swedish goal. As you said, Ron, it's been the veteran line of the Soviets who have been controlling the play, both their ships. Petrov, Harmlov, Mikhailov. It looks like they're going to be content to get the silver. They want to get the silver. They don't want the bronze. Maybe perhaps their last Olympic game, they gave it all out in the first two shifts of the hockey game that they've taken. Shlutov, the big fellow, out there to take the draw. Against Moline from the faceoff, Balderas to Shlutov. Shlutov rolling it in front for Balderas. It's steered off behind the net by Anderson. Now along the boards. Working it out is Erickson at center ice. Anderson over the line, over to the far side. There's a chance for the Swedes as they get it in front of the net and it's steered into the corner. Balderas. Balderas drops it off. Perbuchen back to Balderas now. Big Schluchtoff cutting across at center ice as Balderas weaves his way out of the zone. Into the center ice area he comes. And he collides with Schluchtoff. That's like running into a Mack truck behind the net now. Buck is still inside the zone. Now out in front, here's Balderas getting set, and he is spun around. There'll be a penalty call by the referee, Bernie Haley, against the Swedes. It's 1-0 Soviets. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Go, Canada! Canada, get going. Go for the savings and values you'll find at Sears right now, all across Canada. Save $5 to $20 on textured draperies. Save $150 on a Craftsman radial arm saw. Save one-third on fashion wall coverings. And save $100 on a 20-inch color TV. See these great values and more right now in Sears new catalog and Sears retail stores. So let's go, Canada. Get saving at Sears. And from the faceoff, the puck is batted ahead with a glove, so they'll take the faceoff all the way down to the other end of the ice. The penalty, by the way, Lundholm, number 17 for the Swedes, for hooking at 4.49. There's Bernie Haley from Canada, the referee in this hockey game. Soviets win this one, they get the silver medal. The Swedes win it, they get the silver medal. That is so. At center ice, his pass was off home from skate. Back inside the zone, Alexander Golikov, one of the two brothers. Round the net. Ahead. At center ice, Vladimir Golikov. He loses it. Vidisov turns around with it. Feeds it over to the far side for Kazadinov. Kazadinov out over center ice himself. Works to the line. Still has that puck. Kazadinov going for the board to the far side. Kazadinov on the power play. Watch these. Soviets shift around inside the zone, and look at this, they throw the puck away. At center ice now, Holmgren over skates it, but he's got the puck. Now Golikov, Golikov over for Makarov, he's over the line, Makarov going one-on-one, -on -one. the shot, he scores! What an effort by Makarov, as he went in one-on-one -on -one with Weinstock, got to the backhand and fired it past uh, Lindbergh, and it is two to nothing on a power play goal. Makarov, 21 years old, steals the puck just in the neutral zone. A little tip from Golikov moves in. He's got the little stick, very small stick, a short player, goes to his backhand, slides around. 
Lindbergh, the puck goes right between his legs, just that small opening. He didn't close his legs quick enough. On on the backhand, Soviet Union goes ahead two to nothing. Well, I think we can assume that they do, in fact, want the silver medal. They're playing pretty well here early in the game. Buck is poked away on the far boards now. Malsev cleared right back into the Soviet end. Back to get it for the Soviets. Valerie Vasiliev slammed in against the boards by Norberg. And the puck is out at center ice once again. On the far boards, Erickson. Erickson shooting it in. Vasiliev once again. Vasiliev working with Starikov, and he gets the pass. Now out at center ice, Prudov. Prudov. Had it roll off his stick. Inside the blue line now, the Swedes just iced the puck. All the way down into the Soviet zone, Starikov will go back to collect it. And as he touches it, it's called on the icing. The power play goal, Makarov from Alexander Golikov at 5.52, 2 nothing. The Soviets are leading the game. We have now played six minutes and 45 seconds. Viktor Tikhonov, the coach. A frustrating tournament, I think, for him. It didn't look like they were very happy when they came on the ice, Tom. So their warm-ups here at the Olympic Fieldhouse. Per Vukic over to the far side. Ilya lets it off on the ice now as it comes into Mushkin. Into the corner. Turning with it is Vilya Lettinov in the far corner. Out ahead for Harlamov. This line has really been flying. It's poked ahead, and here comes Harlamov again. Over the line. Look out. It's behind off in front of that, and he had it hop off his stick. Good play. Out in front into the slot, but they couldn't get it to the defenseman. The Swedes come right back. Lundov. Lundov trying to get it over the line, and the Soviets are just lining up and stopping them every time they try. It's now it's Petrov over the line, offside. Mihailov came in too quickly on the left wing, so the offside is called. As you said at the beginning, the Soviets weren't too happy when they came out from the warm-up. As a matter of fact, Fedozov, you get another look at the goal. Makarov just pushing the puck on his backhand after making a good move around Weinstock, putting it between Lindbergh's leg. There's Makarov, the goal scorer, but they weren't too happy. Fedozov just took a swing at the glass when he came out, butt end of the glass, as soon as he came out of the, on the ice in the warm-up. Puck rolls out into the slot area. Now it's cleared out to center. Rice and the Swedes carrying the puck down over the line as Jonsson. He gets in, but then it pops out over the line, and Holmgren brought it in offside. So it's called again. There is Mushkin, the young goaltender. Into this game, he replaced that fella, Vladislav Kretjak, for the second period of the game against the United States. And it appears that he may be the goaltender we'll be seeing a lot of in international hockey. Now the Swedes inside their own end. Fedosov around the board, straight up to Shluktov. Shluktov on the far side, down, down over the line, comes Schwartzov. Baldera swooping into the slot. Shluktov gets the pass back to Baldera. It's the Fedosov. Fedosov's shot is right on. And it's blocked by Lindbergh, and he holds on. As we've seen so many times in the tournament, the Soviet defensemen are not afraid to move right up on the plate. The little drop pass inside the top. He's right down as far as the dots to take that shot. And that's the fourth man. What you have to watch for in the Soviets is not just the slot man, the third forward coming. You've got to watch for the fourth and the fifth man coming in to get the opportunity. Now the faceoff. Baltin from the faceoff. Loses the puck. Golikov trying to get it out. He does right to the blue line. Vasiliev shot. And that whistle's just wide. Starikov moving in. He fanned on that pass partially. And carrying it around behind his own net is Eriksson. Out to center ice from Waltine to Erickson. Erickson getting it caught up in his skates. Works to the line. Feeds it in. There was a player trapped inside the line. And it's called on the offside. And another faceoff as we look at Sergei Sterikov. And one of the Golikov brothers there. That's Alexander Golikov. From the Kiev region. He plays with Gorky Torpedo. And he's been with the national team since just last year. But we're seeing the, the new faces now being moved in seeing the players that will be I imagine for the 1984 Olympics Golikov dropping it into the corner for Sweden starting out is Moline Moline around to this side for Thomas Erickson out to center ice Lundholm Lundholm controlling it now getting it ahead Anderson he's forced back now Lundqvist Lundqvist shooting it in it's over top of the net off the blocking Glove there of Bushkin behind the net and Alexander Golikov. A rink wide pass. 
Makarov, Alexander Golikov to the line. The candles into the far side, shot in by Vasilyev. And the Swedes take possession, only to lose it in front of the net. And a good save there by Lindbergh, and the puck goes to the far boards. Lundholm loses it to Makarov. He's to candles to the line, forced to retreat. Under some pressure, Makarov still fighting with the puck as he gets it over the line, but it's cleared right back out again, and Sarikov's got it back to Vasilyev. Vasilyev to Alexander Golikov. Golikov over to the far side now, changing on the fly. The Soviets as Lebedev brings it to the line. Lebedev over now for Makarov. Makarov shooting it in behind the net. Golikov, he's slammed in there. The puck bounces high in the air, and the Swedes come away with young Mats Naslund. Naslund at center ice. He can fly over the line, drops the puck. Here's the shot, and it's blocked. Good play there by Vasilyev. Puck is behind the net. Cleared against the boards on the far side by Stock. He gets it out of center ice as he is turned around partially by Lebedev. Now it's Ben over to this side. Jonsson over the line. His shot is blocked at the defense. Into the corner it goes. Weinstock in there. Poking away at it. Puck comes out. And the Soviets have it again. They're moving. Here's a two-on-one. Maltsev's over the line with Prudhoff. Maltsev circling the defense. Getting set. Rolls it to the goal mount area. In too deep on the play was Prudhoff. Prudhoff over to this side. Here's the chance. Vinny Lentinov scores. Three to nothing Soviets. Vinny Lentinov getting the goal. Philadelphia Lentinov moving right in again. Just what we've talked about before earlier in the show. The Soviets attack with all five players. They control deep in the zone. And you see him moving right in. Right in from the blue line. Again, almost into the dots. There's the little tip from in front of the net. Maltsev scoring from Belodinov. But he's not afraid to move in. But the goal goes to Maltsev, who just tipped the shot from the defenseman as he moved in from the point. Petrov from the faceoff has it to center ice. Petisov clears it in over the line. Turning with it for Sweden is Leif Holmgren. Now over for Hakan Eriksson. In front of the net, Welteen. All the way to center ice with that lead pass. Ahead, spun around as he hit the line was Norberg. And back. Now at center ice, Soviets again control. They've been in control of things totally since this hockey game started. Kazanov leaving it from a high off over to the far side. Benisov out at center ice for Harlamov. Harlamov over the line with Mihailov and Petrov. Petrov hacking away at it. Here's Mihailov cutting through the slot. And he couldn't get the shot away, and the puck is cleared down the ice. All the way to the Soviet goal. There'll be no icing on it as Petrov gets the pass from behind the net. Ahead for Mihailov. Mihailov being wrestled off the puck. Moline turning with it. At center ice, Moline leading the rush. Moline's over the line. He's stopped by Petrov coming up from behind. And here comes Petrov. Petrov ahead for Mihailov. And he tried to turn with that pass. And as he did, he was checked by Thomas Erickson. Out at center ice, Lundqvist unable to get past Petrov. Petrov rolling it in front of the net. Erickson, Erickson shooting it out to center ice. And it's Kazadinov. Kazadinov ahead intended for Petrov. Soviets on a change right now as Anderson comes over the line. Here's the return pass for Lundqvist. And it went right by him. Now Balderas up the left boards ahead. That's... Uh, a pass for Petrov offside on the play, and the Soviets will complete their change as the Petrov line goes off the ice. And if we're seeing the Petrov Harlamov Mihailov line for the last time, I'll tell you, they're putting on a show. There's the little tip in, Maltsev moving. Again, the defenders, they're not afraid. You know, the Soviet philosophy is when they attack, they attack with all five players. The defense, when you have possession of the puck, they're part of the attacking unit, and they're not afraid to move in and take chances to get a goal. Vasilia back in his own zone, ahead for Shluktov. Shluktov over to the far side for Balderas. to Shluktov and Shluktov had it roll off the end of his stick. Behind the net. The Swedes again, trying to get control of this game, and so far failing to is Jonsson. Jonsson backing up against the boards, clears it over the far side, off the skate of Weinstock. And for checking, there is Sportsov. And the puck finally comes out to center ice. The Swedes coming away. Mats Alberg stops in over the line. Alberg. Alberg trying to drop it off. And here come the Soviets with Balderas on a break. Balderas along. Gets it. Shoots. And the save by Lindbergh. Out come the Swedes. Janssen at center ice. Dropped off. Now it's at center ice with Weinstock shooting it in. Digging in is Starikov. Board checking for Sweeten is all there. Gets cleared along the board. Schluchtoff ahead for Balderas. Balderas is over the line. Stops. 
Balderas dropping it back. Still has that puck. Now out in front, here's the shot taken from the blue line by Vasiliev. It drips into the crowd and is called for a face-off. The Soviets leading this game three to nothing. What a show they're putting on, too. Balderas going going off the ice. They're getting cheeky now, being ahead three nothing. Balderas makes the uh, the breakaway first. Put, tries to put the puck between Lindbergh's leg. Lindbergh dropping, makes the save, but Balderas coming back, did a little spin around, took the puck between his legs, kicked it back onto a stick, just playing with it. Balderas voted the top forward in the 1977 World Championships, another Soviet win, of course. Puck is against the boards on the far side, taking a hit in there is Sergei Makarov. Puck winds up in Soviet. Possession as Alexander Golikov gives it to his brother Vladimir over the line. Vladimir, there he is, coming through as he got by the defense, but then lost possession of it. Against the boards, Per Wuken moving in. Puck comes out to center ice once again and turning with it is Billy Lethedov. He just flips it ahead. Per Wuken, Per Wuken working it to the line. It drops in there. Erickson, Jan Erickson. Out ahead for Hocken Erickson at center ice. Sweden. Leonard at Nordberg. Shooting it in, into the corner he goes, following the puck. He's pushed in against the boards. Sweden still with that puck. Here's Anderson, the shot, and he's just wide with that one. Now Bilya lifted it off. Around behind the net for Per Vuken. Per Vuken ahead for Alexander Golikov. It went right by him, all the way down into Swedish territory. Sture Anderson will touch it, and it's called for the icing with 531 left in the period. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. In the Kensington Market area of Toronto, many people have English only as a second language. So the local Scotia Bank has several people on staff who speak at least one other language besides English. Because whenever a community has a special need, our goal is to see that it's met at the Scotia Bank, just around the corner. Face off the puck rolled right into Mushkin, the goaltender, and we'll have a face off in the Soviet end again with 516 remaining in the period. Don't forget, we're on the air almost all day with Olympic live Olympic coverage, figure skating exhibition tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Always a fun thing. It'll come to you from this very spot, the Olympic Field House, 7 o'clock Eastern Time tonight on CTV. Puck is cleared down into the Swedish end past. Alexander Maltsev, he got the puck, but it was caught on the icing and back into Soviet territory. It will go for another face-off. There's Lebedev. From the Soviet Wings Hockey Club. He's been with the national team since 1973. Actually, uh, in his first Olympics, he's kind of a spot forward. There's Alexander Maltsev, and is he ever going to play another hockey game for the Soviets? Well, I'm not sure whether he is. He's uh, perhaps going to be in his last game as well, but a great performer for the Soviet Union for many years. He's had a pretty good tournament, too. Five goals, four assists so far. Now here's Harlamov flying down that right wing again. Boy, are they skating. Here he is down against the side of the board. Take a shot. There's another shot. And that one was taken by Petrov, and he got whacked, I think, across the hand as he took that shot. And he's not too pleased with Alberg. Now Petrov. Collides with Harlamov, goes to the far side. The Swedes are over the line once again. Naislin, Naislin shooting it in. And it's taken there for the Soviet Union by Starikov out at center ice and went right by Mihailov and up into the bench of the Swedes and it's called for another faceoff. The all-time leader in the Soviet Major League in scoring, Boris Mihailov. I have seen him do some things in world tournament play over the years. Oldest member of the team in the Central Red Army. Seven world championships, two gold medals, and perhaps a silver medal to go with those here at Lake Placid. Well, it's kept in by the defense of Sweden, Söderström, at the side of the net. Cleared around the boards by Billy Lettenoff. But the Swedes with Valtine. He got spun around on the play as Schwarzoff came in on him. That's Schluckoff that came in on him. Played around behind the net once again for Billy Litanov. He stopped up in the, against the boards, and they'll draw the whistle off to the right of Mushkin. There, I think, a shot of Hakan Eriksson from Jurgen, which is the Swedish champion. He played 19 international games. 
for the young teams. Of course, the Swedes have had all kinds of trouble keeping teams together because they're losing so many players now to the National Hockey League, including, of course, their scoring champion from last year, Andres Kaler, who's playing very, very well for the New York Islanders this year. Up against the boards, Alexander Golikov, he clears it in, over skating it on the far side. Erickson, he goes back now for it. There's behind the net, that's Sturry Anderson. Now it's flipped out to center ice, right by everybody, because not enough will go back to touch it. And clear it around the boards, it's waved off on the icing. Alexander Golikov, and he took a high stick, and he is very unhappy with that. And he turned around and whacked. Bank Lundholm. And I think we're going to get the high. Well, they're both going off for high sticking, I would think. Hooking is the call on the Swedish player. High sticking or slashing is the call from referee Haley on Golikov. There's the Swedish uh, coach, Bank Olsen, from Lexan. So the face off, we'll see the action there. And there's the Swedish player, Bank Lundholm. Inside the line now, Leif Holmgren, battle for the puck. Now Jonsson comes up with it. There's to the far side, it's over the line. Making the check there is Vasilya. Vasilya back in the corner, drops that puck off. Poked in behind the net. Prudov, Prudov coming out now. Prudov at center ice, working to the line. Prudov with Maltsev. Trying to feed it back to Maltsev. That back pass failed to work, and the Swedes come away three on two, but Maltsev gets back in the play over the line, and that is intercepted and cleared up to the line, not out, as they add Maltsev breaking. Here's the shot that's wide of the net, and Maltsev will pick it up and then leave it for Starikov. Starikov, number 12, he takes the shot. It's stocked down by Lindbergh, and he falls on it as he saw a couple of Soviet attackers coming in on him and halts further play. 2.40 left in the first period. 3-0 Soviets leading. The impressive thing about the Soviets today has been their, their puck control. Young uh, Krutov, a member of their World Junior Championship team from Helsinki in January, now playing with the national team. The Soviets have had the possession of the puck for the majority of the game, really moving it well. It seems like they're coming back from their loss to the United States. Baltine now behind his net. Baltine leaving it. Gets the return pass there from Söderström. In against the boards, Eriksson. Eriksson trying to get past Per Vuken. Per Vuken's got the puck now. Gives it to the side of that ball. There's out in front. They score! And again, it's Petrov, and that line is struck again. Petrov from Harlem off this time. Another goal scored by the Soviets, who are just flying, especially this line. They lead 4 to nothing. Mikhailov is left all alone in front of the net. Look at him just come down the far side of your screen. He's all by himself. Two-on-one situation in front of the net. Lindbergh tries to stop the pass across. He knows he's there with his stick, but he's just a little... There he's the stick goes out trying to stop it, but Mikhailov shoots it all in one motion from Harlamov. The Soviets go ahead 4 nothing. There's Mikhailov. The score is 4 to nothing. This is CTV Canada's Olympic Network. What is Esso? It's Eldon Tegler and his exploration crew searching for new oil supplies. It's Don Anderson and the guys running one of the most advanced natural gas plants in Canada. It's scientists like Helen Bernard working to develop better industrial oils. And it's agents like Ron Willey supplying fertilizers to help farmers grow crops more efficiently. They are Esso, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. There's Boris Mihailov, the veteran. Say so many things about him, and there's the play, the goal, the fourth goal. All by himself in front of the net. In fact, he doesn't get all the wood on it that he wanted to when it comes across, but both Waltine and Lindbergh not able to stop that pass across from Harlem off an easy one for Mikhailov off the edge of the crease. So the face off, Schluttoff out there. The official scoring on that, Mihailov from Harlamov and Pervukin. Came at 16, at 17.38. Now the Swedes coming out again, Valtin. Over to the far side, digging in is Erickson. Jan Erickson circling the net. Right on top of him is Kazadinov, and he winds up in the corner with that puck. Also in there is Fittisov. The puck is pinned in there and called for the face-off, as you see Hakan Erickson. Both teams still playing a man short with 10 seconds remaining in the double penalty. From the face-off, 
And it's the time remaining in the period. Cleared along past Schluchtoff out to center ice, down over the line. Baltin, Baltin banging it off the boards to the far side. They're taken by Jan Eriksson. Back to Baltin. Baltin to the boards on this side now for Hakan Eriksson. Eriksson back for Waltin. Waltin to center ice. Good playmaking defenseman, Waltin. He gets it to the far side. Eriksson just chops it into the Soviet zone. And it's center ice now. It's Balderas. Balderas for Fedosov coming up. Fedosov winding up the shot. Deflected off Waltin. Sticking right to Lindbergh who steered it into the corner. Now at center ice. Taken by Kazadinov over to the side. It's Fedosov. Fedosov is over the line. Fedosov working in deep. Flips it in front. They bat it out of the air, but they bat it wide. And that was again Balderas trying to get it by Lindbergh. Now behind the net. Less than a minute remaining in the period. 4 0. Soviets are leading this one. And the Swedes try again. Weinstock at center ice tried to get it down to the line. It came off a stick. He gets it again and just flips it in, bouncing it on Mishkin. And he leaves it to the side of the net. Along the boards, Fedosov clears it out to center ice. Jonsson. Jonsson coming right back again. Jonsson winding up the shot, and it's a blistering one. Mishkin then goes down to hold the rebound with 18 seconds remaining in the period. And we've got all kinds of pushing going on and came close to seeing our first fight in these Olympic Games as Lundqvist was right in there along with Balderas. Lundqvist took a little exception. Fedosov was a little upset with Lundqvist trying to come and get that poke, that puck loose. Uh, after Mishkin had held on to it, there's a little shoving in front of the net. Fedosov coming over. And the uh, hey, Swedish player hey, Lundqvist, both of them going off, roughing on the play. Two red. It's got a double minor for roughing. Four there, minutes. There you heard Bernie Haley. There's that good shot coming from center ice by Thomas Jonsson. He's owned by the New York Islanders, drafted 25th overall in the draft last summer. 21-year-old defenseman. Behind the net. Stopping back there is Starikov. 11 seconds left. Here's Starikov getting the return pass. There's the rink-wide pass, and they had Mark Makarov breaking on the play, but he just couldn't get it as it deflected off a stick. And there's the horn to sound the end of the first clear to play. Four to nothing, the Soviets lead the hockey game. All Soviet Union in the first period, leading four to nothing and having the puck the majority of the time. But it was very seldom in the period that the Swedish team had the puck for any sustained length of time. And they didn't come to the attack. They let the Soviets bring the attack to them. And when you do that, that's fatal because they control the puck so well. By the way, that was a double minor that was handed out to Fedosov. Now that means that uh, early on in the second period, we're going to have a uh, power play advantage for Sweden. But right now, Sweden's just got to figure out how to do it with uh, with everybody on the ice, and they're having an awful time, especially against the, the line that is centered by uh, Vladimir Petrov with Mihailov and Harlamov. We don't have the shots on goal yet in that uh, period. Now we have them. It is 15 to 5, favor the Soviet Union, 4 0 the score. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. <laughs> Zenith System 3 is even better. Even better. The sharpest Zenith picture ever. An all-modular chassis designed to be our most reliable ever. And now, better sound. Four speakers, even an audio control center. Zenith System 3. Right now, get a $25 rebate on the purchase of any 26-inch or selected 20-inch System 3 model. I've always been one for those things in life that last forever. Fine jewelry, fine motor cars. So imagine how excited I was when I found out Speedy guarantees my muffler for as long as I own my car. Speedy will guarantee the muffler on your car for as long as you own it, be it domestic or imported. It goes without saying that that can save you money. It's wonderful how some things seem to last forever. Unfortunately, the Major didn't last forever. <laughs> With Team USA winning the gold medal earlier today, it's obvious that the Soviet Union is certainly after the silver medal. In their game against Sweden, they've dominated play right from the early going after scoring the first goal of the game. At the 36-second mark, they've opened up a commanding 4-0 lead over Sweden 
After one period of play, Michigan in goal for the Soviets has seen very little action. Lindbergh in goal for Sweden has certainly been busy in the net, says the Soviets lead four to nothing. Lloyd? Every day for the past 11 days here in Lake Placid, Bernie, you, you may have noticed, as we all have, that uh, several medals have been handed out to various teams from 37 nations competing for those medals. Well, Frank Rigney wondered just what one of those medals was worth. And you may have thought and wondered about the same thing. We get a view of them now. You know, from day to day in my travels around Lake Placid, I've been quite happy to identify where I'm reporting from. But today I can't do that, and you'll see why in just a moment with the background. We're in the area that is surrounded by security because of the gold, bronze, and silver medals that are awarded to the Olympic athletes each evening. With me is one of the co-chairmen of the uh, medals ceremony presentation committee, and Dennis uh, you've told me a lot about the background of the uh, presentation ceremonies, but tell us something about the design of the medals themselves. Well, uh, as you can see here on the cushion, we have the gold, the silver, and the bronze medals. And, uh, of course, they say Lake Placid 1980, which is where we're at. And uh, these uh, designs here are facsimiles of the local foliage, uh, pine and uh, the branches and the things of that nature. I might turn one over here for you and on the back there's the Olympic torch which was a part of the opening ceremonies as you remember and uh, the mountainous course area and uh, uh, I might point out to you that this is the actual cushion that is used in the uh, outdoor and the inside ceremonies the only difference is that we would have all gold or all silver or all bronze on one cushion we, they would not be mixed up like this and uh, that's, that's, that, those are the medals. I understand that this is the first time uh, that uh, they actually have had the athletes' names engraved upon these medals as, uh, before they're presented each evening. That's correct. Uh, tell me, where, did, where were the medals designed from? Where did they come from? Uh, is there some particular organization that has supplied them for you? Well, yes. Uh, Tiffany's in New York have designed and fashioned the medals and, of course, have also struck them and supplied them. And ha or have seen to it that they were that that was taken care of, and uh, and that's where that's where they were fashioned at. Do you actually have these engraved each day so that you can present them to the to the athletes with their name inscribed upon them that evening? That's correct, and sometimes it can it can get to be pretty nerve wracking because the official results don't come in until very close to the closing or the or the award ceremony, and uh, and we have to scramble in order to get the names engraved and we have to verify spellings and things of that nature and with the amount of athletes we have here sometimes it takes some time to do that i'm sure it does is there anything else that you can tell us about the uh, the medals for example the value of them well uh we've been asked that question a lot and i think in my opinion the best answer is that to the athlete that has won one it's it's priceless in addition to the medal there are also some t some certificates behind us here i understand they're presented to the athletes as well that's correct uh... first through six places i might just lift one up here and get a little closer here and this is a girl from canada uh... kathy kreiner who came in fifth place in the women's downhill skiing and you will notice the uh... signature uh... on these certificates and they are the actual signatures of lord kalanen and the reverend bernard fell and art devlin and as notice we've knocked over one of the well, that's all right. It wasn't Kathy's anyway, so that's all right. That's, uh, that's really interesting. I'm sure that there are a lot of people that didn't know that certificates are given not just for the three places, but uh, the fourth, fifth, and sixth as well. Is that something new? I don't think that it is. I'm not sure of that. I can't answer that, but I know that it's something that we're doing, and I know the athletes do appreciate it. Dennis, thank you very much for allowing us in here. I know that security has been a problem uh, in terms of, uh, if not a problem, uh, very important to you for, for all of these medals. And we appreciate you uh, allowing us in here to see what the athletes have been striving for over the last four years. And I certainly couldn't agree with Dennis Moore. The real value of these medals, both the gold, silver, and bronze, is not in their monetary value, but in the effort that the athletes have made to attain them. Next, we're going to put the circle around a very special man on that Team Canada you saw in competition here at Lake Placid, Terry O'Malley. That's coming up next. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Oh, uh, fiberglass pink insulation is like long underwear for your house. You see, like your long underwear, fiberglass pink helps keep the heat in and the cold out. And like your long underwear, fiberglass pink should be worn from top to bottom, from the attic right down to the basement. But unlike your long underwear, fiberglass pink uh, never wears out. You want to stay warm this winter? Call your building supply dealer. <laughs> and 
think pink. In the part of the world I grew up in, it was easier to deal with people because you got the kind of friendly, down-to-earth treatment you expect when people know each other. And that's what we want you to expect in every branch of Scotiabank. In the smallest town, in the biggest city, down-to-earth treatment right around the world. There's nothing like a Coke. Coke adds life. Coca Cola adds life. Excuse me. Where do you buy your cosmetics? Shoppers Drug Mart. Where do you buy your cosmetics? Shoppers Drug Mart. Where do you buy your cosmetics? At Shoppers Drug Mart, we can take care of all your beauty needs. And as a qualified beauty advisor, I can help select the cosmetics that are just right for you. So come into Shoppers Drug Mart. We want to help you look your best. The impression you may gather of the Canada Olympic hockey team is one of youth and vigor. But some of that vigor comes from a man who's been around Olymp Olympic hockey tournaments since 1964, Terry O'Malley, who is 39 years old. We have an interview with him today. It's a pleasure to have with us Terry O'Malley, who we keep referring to as the veteran on, on the hockey team. Terry, another game against the Soviet Union, uh, another loss. Uh, I guess you've played them more times than any other Canadian has played against the Soviet Union. Uh, do you find yourself getting a little frustrated after a while? Uh, they're sure a tough team. Uh, today we had them on the ropes. I, uh, if we had just held up at the end of the second period, we probably would have taken them. Um, but we certainly have played them a long time. I, I, and often enough, 67 was the centennial year victory, was really the major one that we've had. We had a victory over in Moscow one time in 69. But other than that, uh, it's been very frustrating, I should say. You look back on some of those games, uh, do some of them stand out in your mind? I'm sure that this, uh, this one particularly at, at this Olympics, but looking back at, at some of the other ones. Well, 64 was really a close one. It was 3-2. It was going into the third period, tied 2-2. And I still remember Almatov uh, from Alexandra putting it up in the top corner. Uh, that made it 3-2 uh, to two with about 10 minutes left. That was certainly a heartbreaker. Uh, no, oh, other years, you know, they've been close, but uh, 66, it was a little closer. 67, it was 2-1. to one. They scored a, on an offside goal, and then they scored one uh, when Fiersov got one. They flipped it up in the air, came down, hit uh, a teammate's glove, and bounced in over their shoulder for uh, that brought them together. We were winning one nothing at that time. That was certainly a heartbreaker at Vienna. So we've had some very close ones, and uh, today it was certainly as close as any of them. What about uh, the Soviet team? Uh, do you see much difference in the team today from 16 years ago? Well, today they looked uh, a little flatter. They certainly came on like gangbusters in the third period. Uh, they have a bigger defense than they did uh, when uh, I played in the 60s. Uh, their goalkeeping with Tretiak, although he didn't look very strong today, is certainly stronger than it, than it was at that time as well. Um, generally, they're passing, though, and. Uh, their team play is much the same as it ever was. You like playing against them? I do. It certainly is a challenge. I find that uh, the Markarov, that number 24, first time I played against him, I thought I had him on the outside, and boy, he swooped right around me. Uh, he's he's the fastest forward I've ever played against on the, coming off the wing. So uh, they have some really speedy forwards now that uh, that uh, we didn't have at that time, and and uh, it certainly is a challenge <laughs> to play against them. Terry, it's been a long career, uh, going way back to a Memorial Cup in 1961. Uh, is this going to be the last year? I believe so, <laughs> except for <laughs> except for a little uh, intermediate hockey out in uh, Notre Dame College in Wilcox, Saskatchewan. Terry, good luck to you. You've uh, been great for Canada over the years, and uh, we wish you all of the best. Thank you very much, Ron. Terry O'Malley, who spoke with Ron Roos just after the loss to the Soviet Union, 6-4. We'll be back with more coverage from the Olympic Games, highlights of the first period between Sweden and the USSR, right after this. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. A sun -kissed.
is sweet. It'll knock you off of your feet. It's a fresh and juicy plump and a heavenly sun-kissed sweet. Don't you know that it's the best we grow? Cause we only stamp the pick of the crop for you don't you know. Whether it's oranges, lemons, or grapefruit, you have our word on it. It's sun-kissed sweet. Lindsay Wagner stars as a sensual woman wielding enormous power in CTV's miniseries presentation of the scorching bestseller, Scruples. Billy, darling. Now we have made things right, Edouard. She's every man's type. Oh, I didn't recognize you without your sunglasses. The better to mentally undress you, my dear. Take this woman to yes. be your lawful wife. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, what do you want, a divorce? And every exit sealed off. I'm going to have you. Welcome back to our CTV Olympic coverage here in Lake Placid, New York. After one period, it's 4 nothing for the Soviets over Sweden. And with us now, we have Rod Gilbert, former National Hockey League great with the New York Rangers. And Rod's been working very close with us, doing commentary on TVA. Yeah, we've got a lot of highlights to show here, Rod. I'd like to hear your comment on the game. Very close, as a matter of fact, Bernie. We've been in that TV <laughs> room there an awful lot, and I, I really feel good about being here. Of course, the, the, we're very happy that the U.S. won the gold medal, and uh, and what it would have been because of uh, Russia beating Sweden if the U.S. had been defeated. But as we're going to see, uh, the Russians are just too strong for the Swedes, and uh, it's un it's unfortunate a little bit because Lindbergh had been so outstanding all through the tournament, and uh, he's been left uh, a little bit alone here uh, in this first period. That's right. He must be shell-shocked after that first <laughs> period. A lot of activity. Yeah. And they say uh, the likes of Mikhailov and Petrov and Harlamov are, this is their swan song as far as Olympic competition, but they're really flying, and especially on this first goal, Rod. Uh, you see Harlamov, the shot off the boards here. It's amazing how they can get that puck. It's bouncing around, and they just control it, and it got to Petrov. Well, I guess they practice with a, a tennis ball at times, Bernie, and you can see, like, even when the puck is up a little bit on, the, uh, on its edge, uh, they get it. This is Makarov now. This is on a power play, and uh, Makarov comes in, and he just makes a tremendous ship on Weinstock, I believe, and he goes on his backhand, and Lindbergh has his leg open a little bit and uh, just sneaks right in there. It's a great play. Then Maltsev uh, deflecting the shot from the point. Krutov brought it in. It gets back to Billy Oletinov, and I'll let you pick it up here. Well, as you can see, when the defenseman shoots it, they never shoot it at the goalie. They always have somebody on the side of the net. This is a European type of play, and, and you can see Maltsev, which is uh, placed right at the corner of the net and just uh, deflects it in the net. And, Rod, you can't leave any, someone like Boris Mikhailov all alone in front of the net like the situation here. Well, it's, you, you tell me that uh, this line is going to sign off after this year. And you can see how he lifts the puck over the stick of the defense. And it's just a tremendous play. And the whole line is outstanding in this first period. And uh, hopefully, well, we're happy about the U.S. game. And whatever happened here is, uh, is for silver. So everybody in this... Uh, and this world is happy right now. Okay, our thanks to Rod Gilbert, who's working on TVA, and uh, thanks for your comments, Rod. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. When Canada's young Olympic skiers roar down Whiteface Mountain at Lake Placid, every muscle has to pour it on. That calls for every ounce of energy, Canadian energy. We're deeply involved with it at Naranda. Through our subsidiary, Canadian Hunter, Naranda is helping to develop Canada's deep basin discovery into one of the world's great natural gas fields. With a surplus of trillions of cubic feet of gas, Canada is now ready to compete internationally for energy markets. Canada's vast energy developments mean jobs, security, and a prosperous future for all Canadians, as well as for us in the Naranda Group of Companies. Like Canada's fine young athletes, we're proud to be Canadians, competing worldwide. There are our goaltenders, Vladimir Mishkin, Pele Lindberg, and we're underway at the, the Soviet Union's leading this game four to nothing. Puck is back in the Soviet zone. 
Vasiliev. Vasiliev leaving it for Petrov. He's around behind the net. This line has been busy all night. Here's Petrov at center ice, lugging the puck to the line. Now Petrov sweeping into the corner. Petrov still with that puck, rolls it into the slot, but it's cleared away by the Swede, Sutterstrom. And back out to center ice where Vasiliev will take it back in his own zone. Vasiliev. Over to the far boards, working out to center ice now. Vasiliev cutting to the line. Vasiliev trying to sweep all the way around. He gets the shot. He scores! And Vasiliev end to end to get that one on a backhand shot. Valerie Vasiliev. And the Soviets lead it 5 to nothing, 33 seconds into the period. Lindbergh again having trouble with the backhand shot. It may have touched this defenseman as Vasiliev swept around him. But that's the third backhand goal today against Lindbergh. Sometimes you look for that puck to go high. Here he is sweeping around. It looks like it did touch the defender's stick as he was going down, but the innocent looking backhand as Vasiliev went around the Swedish defenseman going into the net on Lindbergh. Well, it's the third goal that's been scored while the Petrov line has been on the ice, but a defenseman picks up this one, likely unassisted. I don't remember anybody giving him the puck inside the zone. Here's Maltsev at center ice. Maltsev coming away with that puck, clears it over the line, breaking in is Lebedev. Lebedev working for the net, but taking the puck for Sweden is Bank Lundholm. In the corner, leaving it there for Thomas Eriksson. Over to the side now, Anderson. Anderson behind the net for Lundholm. He clears it to the far side, turning with it is Lars Moline. Moline on his way to the blue line to center ice that lead pass it goes all the way down to michigan and he holds it for the faceoff. the goal is unassisted at the 33 second mark valerie vasiliev making it five to nothing by the way the leading scorer in this tournament just to show how things are changing tom alexander golikov has 13 points second is young krutov with well, now, not now, because Mihailov and Makarov have moved uh, ahead of Krutov. But coming into the game, there was a three-way tie for second place. But Mihailov, Makarov with 11 points, and Krutov with 10. I'm sure they'd trade them all if they thought they were playing for the gold medal in this hockey game. Exactly. The far boards. It's uh, picked away now by Starikov. He clears it around the boards to this side. Bork is out and off. It's intercepted at the line. Here's Baltine with a shot. And that one was blocked at the goal mouth by Mushkin, and he shoots him down the ice. Down into the Swedish zone. Back to get it will be Baltine, and he picks it up. And it's called on the icing. Lindquist on the bench. Played in Moscow last year. The first time he is. And Baltine. He's from Jure Gardens as well. That's the uh, Stockholm team in the Swedish Elite League, and they are the champions, the defending champions. Also, a defenseman who finished fifth in the scoring race last year, Tom. On the faceoff against the boards taken there by Vinya let the dog around behind the net to the far side there it's careful Kim. he shoots it down the ice and no icing on this one and uh, the Soviets now playing at a manpower disadvantage that's because of that penalty the double penalty was called late in the period now out of center ice the Swedes carrying the puck Weinstock Weinstock over the line home we're getting set he shoots what a save by Mishkin as he picked that one out of the air. Mishkin. Weinstock making a nice little pass, rushing up, having the man advantage, just putting that little backhand pass over the defender, breaking in all by himself. The good shot. Mishkin coming up with a glove save. From the faceoff now, cleared around the boards. Billy Lichtenhoff relayed out over center ice by Balderas. Back to get it. Weinstock, number four for the Swedes. Weinstock dropping it off, nearly left it for a Soviet player there. Now a long lead pass for Holmgren at center ice. Holmgren's over the line. Allberg put himself offside, and it'll be called for a faceoff. There's Leif Holmgren. Don't forget the 1980 Olympic highlights on CTV tonight. We'll review the whole 13 days of Lake Placid. That's following the national news tonight on CTV. Moline getting the draw from the faceoff. A minute 16 remaining in the power play advantage for Sweden. Over the line comes Erickson. Erickson is checked on the play. Starikov's got it. He shoots it out to center ice. It's dropped off. Anderson for Moline. Moline behind the net. He stops there in for checking his Makarov. And the pass comes off the heel of a skate, rolls right to the goal mouth area, and Lindbergh himself had to clear it into the corner. Anderson will try again. Makarov right in top there. 
Moline, Moline out to center ice, went right by Lundholm. And Vasiliev has got it. He shoots it over center ice and down into the Swedish zone, and Lindbergh's out to leave it. Erickson into the corner. At center ice, the lead pass, Sinistrum, but he's unable to get past the defense. And again, the Soviets, here's a chance now, is over the line, comes Golikov, he shoots, and he shot it wide. Now in the corner, Swedes in possession, Lundholm. The far side, 19 seconds left of the power play. At center ice, it's dropped off. Over the line comes Söderström, tied up on the play. There was Lundholm, and a little slashing going on inside the blue line, and the referee didn't see that. I think it was Makarov who took a slash at Erickson. Here's Waltine. The penalty has expired. Waltine at center ice, shooting it in. Digging in after it is finished off. He clears it along the boards. At the blue line, Erickson. Erickson in. Swinging away with that puck is Norberg. Norberg trying to find some skating room. Ends up behind the net. On top of him is Starikov. Norberg still with it. Norberg back towards the line. And finally, it's taken away by Mihailov. He drops it back. And that's Basidiev. Basidiev to Starikov. Out at center ice. And here's Harlamov. Harlamov had it roll off his stick. Erickson. He just stepped by Harlamov, turns, comes back out to center ice, shoots it in, it goes off the chest of Fidisov. The Swedes carry on, Vasiliev now gets it behind the net. Vasiliev, Harlamov, Harlamov clearing it down the ice, Petrov sticking after it. He goes in, tries to roll it in front, here comes Harlamov, he overskated it, but coming in now on the back end is Vasiliev, he circles into the corner. He is hauled down and there'll be a penalty call to Sweden. And the Soviets will go on the power play. 5-0. Soviets lead. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. What is ESSO? It's Bonnie Lowe and other geologists searching for uranium deposits. It's chemists like Joe Gutman developing efficient, more compact furnaces for your home. It's technicians like Gary Piggott conducting research into solar energy. And it's Raymond Mayer, supplying special lubricants for giant diesels. They are ESSO, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. Kahlberg is off the ice on the penalty for hooking. Back inside the zone. The Soviets starting out now. It's Kazadinov ahead for Petrov, and he's got all kinds of room with Mihailov moving up, and Puck has slipped in front of the net, and Mihailov couldn't knock it down. Harlamov on the far boards. Harlamov poking away at it, so is Mihailov. Puck bounces to the line, kept in at the line, holding it there and doing a good job to spin us up to Kasatinov. Kasatinov in now for Mihailov. Mihailov backing up to the boards. Out for Kasatinov. Back to Mihailov. Mihailov swinging into the corner. Mihailov back behind the net for Harlamov. Harlamov back out to Mihailov. He flipped it over top of the net. Fedisov moves in after it on the far boards. Fedisov. Petrov back at the line. He drops it in for Harlamov. Harlamov circling away from the check. Harlamov goes down. Moving in is Fedisov. Petrov's got the puck for, back to Fedisov. Little wrestling going on. And the puck is cleared to the side of the net. Harlamov's lost his helmet. Puck is in the corner. Mihailov. Mihailov behind the net for Petrov. Petrov out in front. And fanning on it was Fedisov. It was in deep. And the Swedes finally clear it down the ice. Down again, it will be Fedisov from goaltender Mishkin. He turns with it, starts out. Fedisov at center ice. He can carry the puck over to the far side now. Puck is over the line. Digging him deep with it is Krutov. Back to the blue line. Fedisov to Kazadinov. In for Maltsev. Back to Kazadinov. Back to Maltsev. Maltsev working to the side of that. Rolls it in front. Kazadinov can't reach it. It bounced off a leg out to center ice. And Kazadinov has got it. Over for Fedisov. 12 seconds left of the penalty. And the Swedes get it at center ice. A bouncing puck taken by Moline. Down to the line it comes. Lebedev can't reach it. And it's cleared out over center ice and down into the Soviet zone. And Kazadinov will go back to get it. The Swedes have successfully killed off the penalty. The puck is out at center ice for Maltsev. Good play as he got it away to Lebedev. Lebedev over the line. He's tied up on the play. The puck is back out at center ice. And Kazadinov goes back into his own end for it. Kazadinov. Behind the net, over to the far side. It's relayed out to center ice for Lebedev. Lebedev, over for Krutov, over the line for Lebedev. Lebedev had to go back for it. The Soviets changing on the fly with the puck right in front of their bench. Perbukin, Perbukin, clearing it ahead. Krutov's over the line. He's all alone. He gets it. Oh, what a goal as it was flipped ahead right on the line. 
And Rudolph just got in there and then played around with it until he could steer it into the goal mound. Well, he's, I think he's trying to put on a little bit of a show there and see what, there's nothing to this game, is there? But Krutov, here's the tip, which puts him on side. It just comes over the line, Krutov all by himself. He knows once he's beat the sprawling Lindbergh, he has no problem, just takes his time, touches it over the line. Well, we don't want to hurry that shot because I knew it was going to be in the net anyway. <laughs> Six to nothing. The Soviets leading Sweden. By all appearances, the Soviets will have the silver medal. As over the line, now comes Balderas. Balderas getting set now, circles behind the net. Balderas trying to hook it away. Puck is cleared into the corner, but the Soviets prevail. Into the corner they go, swooping with it is Sportsov. Sportsov out to the blue line now. Stick handling along the line as Bilya lifted it off, working it in for Schluchtov. Schluchtov had it hop off his stick. Bilya lifted it off, now forced out over the blue line on the checking of Erickson. Now Balderas, he's in over the line. He can't get the puck past Norberg. Balderas, back to the blue line. Quick shot comes in. That was blocked by Sportsov himself in front of the net, and it ends up back down in the Soviet zone. Bailey let it off to Schluchtov. Schluchtov back to Bailey let it off, and center ice ahead to Balderas. Balderas over the line, circles back, drops it off, flipped in there, scores, deflected in front of the net. I believe that will be Sportsov's goal, or uh, Schluchtov in front of the net. Sportsov, I believe. Sportsov uh, tapped that puck down on the long shot from the point. Balderas controlling it, throwing it to the point. The puck comes through, and you just see Sportsov just off the edge of the crease deflecting the puck home. You know, and you can't help but feeling the Soviets are ahead 7 to nothing. But, boys, you're doing a little too late. A little too late. You can, you can act, you can score, you can get 10 here, but it's not going to make any difference. The United States has that gold medal. 8.14, the time of that goal. We'll catch up on the scoring in a moment. Naslin breaking in over the line, but he's bumped off the puck there by Vasiliev behind the net. Vasiliev kicking it free, and we'll have a penalty called here as Starikov brought it out over the line. But Ernie Haley, the referee from Canada, has called a penalty for holding, and it'll be called against Valerie Vasiliev. Vasiliev got the goal to start this period at 33 seconds. Krutov from Terbukhin at 7.18. And then it is Sportsov scoring from Balderas and Terbukhin. And that goal came at the eight-minute mark. Puck is cleared down the ice. The Soviets killing off a penalty now. Or holding. The penalty called on Vasiliev. Behind their own net. It is left there for Mats Nesland who is on the list of the Montreal Canadiens, drafted last year. Now Alberg. Alberg can't get out. Alberg then skated right by it. And the Swedes with Weinstock carrying the puck. He hits the line, drops it off. Naslin taking a shot. It's well wide of the net. Goes to the far boards. Holmgren. Holmgren can't control it. Out over center ice. It comes again. And Weinstock will have to go back into his own end. Weinstock, as we near the midway point of the game. Weinstock carrying the puck himself to center ice, beats it off the boards, but the puck is immediately wheeled right back down the ice by the Soviets. And again, Weinstock will try. Weinstock, number four for Sweden, beats it off the far boards, past Janssen, in deep is Fittisov. He takes a rough ride from Janssen along the boards. Weinstock can't contain it and it's all the way down into Swedish territory again Moline back there number 23 he just dropped it off for Bengt Lundholm Lundholm to Moline at center ice stick handling with that puck ahead for Lundqvist he just popped it over to the far side Lundqvist trailing on the play gets the puck gets it in over the line but he is checked there by Alexander Golikov and it's cleared around the boards here's Moline Moline over to the far side taken by Erickson in front for Moline he's shot and it's right on he had a great chance on that one 23 seconds left of the power play. In the corner, Lundholm. Around behind the net for Fittisov. Fittisov. Out to center ice. Moline knocked that one down. And he shoots it right back in again. 12 seconds left in the penalty as Fittisov gets it again. Beats it rink wide. On this side, Kazanov banging it off the boards at center ice for Anderson. Storia Anderson. Right back in over the line. And it goes off his leg twice. Gets in front of the net. They steer it right through the goal mouth area, but Sutterstrom couldn't convert it. Now the penalty has ended. The puck is out at center ice off the stick of Golikov. Now trailing on the play is Basidiev. He comes over the line. 
Puck rolls to the goal mouth area, and it's loose there, taken finally by Erickson. He can't control it, has to go against the boards after it. Petrov is in there as well, and behind the net. For Sweden, it's Sutterstrom. Out to center ice, working to the line. It is Erickson. Erickson out in front of the net, but it's intercepted. And here's that lead pass taken by Harlamov. Now Mihailov. Mihailov over the line. Stops up against the boards. Feeds it back. Fedisov. Fedisov working with Kasatinov along the blue line. He circles the defense. Goes in deep. Cleared in against the boards. After it is Hakan Erickson, and it's cleared down the ice. And Kasatinov will go back to touch it. And it's called on the icing. 8.25 remaining in the second period. The Soviets leading by a score of seven to nothing. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Boy, you guys are getting good at that. I mean, you just zip through those logs, nothing to it. Hard to keep up with you guys. Yeah, we noticed. For years now, Fred and the boys have laid in a little wood for winter and put away some Molson explorers. We must have got uh, five quarts of that. Hey, what do you mean, we? The time is right. Your friends are here. You couldn't ask for a better beer. Export keeps on tasting great when the time is right for great beer. Right off the face off, the puck is cleared down the ice. We're going to get another icing call here as Kermuchin comes back to touch it. Number five for the Soviets, and the faceoff will come down in Swedish territory. You know, Ron, I can't help but thinking uh, that there must have been a lot of pressure on the Soviet team coming in here. I don't know. They seem to be too experienced a team to be upset by the crowd, but the game against the United States, when they lost the hockey game, they were very, very tight. Today, when they're so loose, there's nothing really at stake except the silver medal, which they've got in their back pocket. They wanted the gold. They're flying today. Buck is cleared along the boards. Petrov can't keep it in as Alvar gets it out at center ice now. Moline down over the line. He's unable to get loose. That's Johnson, number two. And the Soviets come right back. Ahead for Petrov from Harlamov. Petrov heading for the corner. Out in front of that net is Harlamov. Out for Billy Alitinov. And the puck is steered away and down the ice into Soviet territory. Hermukhin will come back to touch it. Clear it around behind the net. Billy Alitinov on the far side. Ilya Letinov ahead, right past Krudov. He gets it himself, drops it over the line. Lebedev, a back pass there for Ilya Letinov. He's turned around on the play. Lebedev in front, here's a chance now. Krudov gets set, the shot is flipped wide by Mihailov. Now the Swedes on their way out of the zone again. Naisland at center ice, shooting it in. It bounces wide of the Soviet goal. Ilya Letinov is after it. He beats along the boards for Krutov. Krutov ahead for Lebedev. Lebedev back for Krutov to Lebedev. Lebedev has checked at the blue line, and Ilya Letinov has to skate back with it. Now for Maltsev. Maltsev ahead, over the line. Lebedev putting it into the slot area. Nobody there that can contain that puck, and Krutov gets it over the line now. Is uh, Lundholm. Lundholm in against the boards. Try to get it back, gets the puck again, back to the blue line for Erickson. Erickson shot, and it drifts wide of the net. In against the boards on this side now. Anderson steering it out to center ice, and it's called on a two-line pass, and we'll have the face-off. Don't forget, on CTV Live, right from this, the Olympic Fieldhouse, the closing ceremonies of the 1980 Winter Olympic Games from Lake Placid, New York. That's live, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Face off will be about 15 feet inside the blue line of the Soviets. And it is Shluktov who gets the draw. Sports off in the corner. Over to the far side. Relayed off the boards by Sterikov. All the way down the ice. Balderas is in there. But it's Waltine who takes it. Waltine starting out. Over to the far side. Eriksson shooting it in. Back to get it is Starikov, and as he touches it, icing again, and the face-off again in the Swedish zone with 6-12 left in the second period. 7-0, Soviets are leading. That is not a happy Swedish bench. No, you, you can't uh, blame them. They're down. They're trying to take a little nourishment on that bench, try to collect something, try to get a goal or two, make it a little more respectable here, but down 7-0 with still 6-12 remaining. It's not very encouraging to the Swedish team. By the way, Per Buchen, the defenseman, there's a shot. It's blocked, that's taken by Balderas. Per Buchen, the defenseman, has four assists in this game. Clear down the ice. We'll review the scoring quickly, perhaps in the next whistle or two. Buck behind the net, and it's touched on the icing, so it'll come back down into the <laughs> Swedish end again. 5.57 left in the period, 7-0 Soviets. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. 
What's the great name in sports? For over 100 years, the name Spalding has been found wherever great athletes meet to test their skills. When you want sports equipment that lets you be your best, choose Spalding, the great name in sports. Here over the line now come the Soviets. It's Balderas going in there. The puck is shot wide of the net. Is breaking in with Svortsov. And the Swedes will come right back. Out at center ice it comes. Alberich over the line. Gets by the defense. Clears it to an open wing. Moving in is Weinstock. He winds up. He's got that good shot, but it was blocked at the defense by Svortsov. Now beside the net. Cleared into the corner. Naisland digging after it. Also Vasiliev in there. He takes a shove at Naisland, who's a small fella. And it winds up with the puck is now slipped off over for Balderas, dropping it there. Now comes Sports off back for slipped off and he scores, and it's eight nothing. What can you say? They've, they've oh. just controlled the puck from beginning to end. It's as much like saying, boys, you shouldn't have challenged this before. A super play at this point. Slipped off, makes the original pass. Balderas throws it back to Sports off. Watch all in one motion. Doesn't even wait for the puck. You know, to line it up, he shot all in one motion, just under the bar, inside. The shot couldn't have been better. No wasted motion in the net. The Soviets go ahead eight to nothing. <laughs> what is it going to stop? It's going to look like Japan all over again. That's the whole line doing it there. It's from the faceoff now. It is cleared ahead. Kazadinov down at the line goes Alexander Golikov in the corner now. Cleared away, kept inside the zone. Here's Fedosov, shot, he scores on the backhand. And it is nine to nothing. Fedosov getting in deep. He's been doing it all game, something I didn't see too much of it in other games, but he is roaming inside the zone from the point. And take a look at this. Makarov doing the hustling, but the blind pass being thrown at this point. Fedosov moving in, moves to his backhand, and I believe that's the fifth backhand goal that's been scored today on Lindbergh. The Soviets haven't forgotten about their backhands, as a lot of other play hockey players have. A lot of players want to take it for their forehand. Now from the faceoff, Golikov falls as he hits the line, but the puck is cleared out to center ice. Kazadinov over for Fedosov. Fedosov ahead off the boards. Makarov inside the line, trying to roll it in front, and the Swedes come right back. At center ice, it's Moline. Moline to the line, trying to work it through. Makarov then clears it away to center ice. Now it's Golikov. Golikov getting around a check, put it right onto the stick there of Anderson. Still inside the zone. Fedosov gulps one in there, and it's wide of the net. Now Lundholm, Lundholm, ahead for Moline. Moline's over the line, Moline going to his backhand, drops it back, there's the shot, it's blocked at the defense, and sliding with Fedosov on the play, and it's center ice now. Off the stick of Golikov, that's Vladimir Golikov, out over the blue line to center ice, Kazanov, a rink wide pass, and picking it up is Alexander Golikov. Golikov, losing it. To Weinstock is thrown away right in front of the net. The shot is fired over top of the net by Makarov. Now Makarov in against the boards. Makarov trying to get it to the line. Still with that puck and it's poked out to center ice. And coming back for it will be Kazadinov. He feeds it off to Fedosov on the far boards. Ahead. And now it's Petrov. He can't control it. Puck is over the line. But Petrov again gets it as the defense covers up. Now. Still inside the blue line, but having trouble and finally recovering is Kazadinov out of center ice for Petrov. Petrov dropping it off. Makarov unable to control it. Harlamov's got it now inside his own end. Fedosov. Fedosov out to Petrov. Petrov. Fed it right by Mihailov. Harlamov's got it. Harlamov. Harlamov beating it back. Kazadinov back inside his own end. Passed dangerously in front of his own net. Pass Hakan Nielsen. Puck is out at center ice. Mihailov can't knock down that pass. Norberg cutting back inside his own blue line. He drops it back. Now it's Baltine. Baltine to center ice. Still with the puck as he hits the line. Baltine with a shot, and it's wide of the net. Norberg in deep. He circles the net. Norberg cutting out in front. It's taken by Petrov, and he flips it out to center ice, where Weinstock gets it again. He comes to the line. He's checked on the play. Now trying to get in is Alberg. That is taken away by Fedosov. Here's a race for the puck at center ice with Mihailov. He can't reach it. The puck is outside the blue line. And starting right back is Holmgren. Holmgren being checked from behind by Petrov and is called on the offside with 2.34 left of the period. And 9-0 is the score for the Soviets. They are on their way to the silver medal here. Of course, the United States has won the gold medal. Don't forget tonight... 
We will have figure skating exhibition, 7 o'clock Eastern time on CTV. This is always a fun event as the champions of the 1980 Olympics show their skills under the non-pressure atmosphere, just having fun. Always one of the nicest shows in the Olympics. Buck is jammed in against the boards and held in the Soviet zone. You wonder about the non-pressure atmosphere that we have here in the hockey game. The Soviets ahead nine to nothing. You wonder how much the Sweden being really down in the hockey game. But you think, you know, they'd want to win the silver medal. The Soviets, no pressure on them. The gold, they're, they're flying here today, but boy, it's a little too late. From the face-off, it's behind the net. Cleared over to this side. Taken by Bailey Lechtenoff. He clears it right in front of that. It's set for Weinstock, and he hung on to it just too long. And the puck is cleared away. Now still inside the zone. Weinstock in deep there, but the pass was intercepted by Perwukin on the far side. He gets it out the blue line, not out Johnson. Johnson winding up his shot at the post. And the puck bounces into the corner. Now out in front of that Weinstock. Weinstock just wheeling it in there, and skating right by that pass was Alberg. Alberg poking away at it against the boards. Now it's chopped in behind the net. And taking it for the Soviet Union is Lebedev. Lebedev out at center ice for Maltsev. Maltsev over the line. Maltsev swinging away from the check. Good play. Rolls it out in front. Now behind the net, they try to jam it. It's rolled up to the blue line. Moving in there and backhanding it in is Billy Lentinoff, but the Swedes just clear it down the ice, and we'll have an icing call here as Billy Lentinoff and now Per Wuken go back. Per Wuken touches it. It'll be back inside the Swedish end with 1.17 left in the second period. Well, ahead 9 nothing. Alexander Maltz has the shot from the point that hits the post. Here's the shot coming through. That's as close as Sweden has come all day. The puck hits the post and comes back out. But Maltsev just joshing now. He's like Cyclone Taylor. Looked like he wanted to try a, uh, to score a goal going backwards at that point, being ahead 9-0. But they're just playing now and having fun. From the faceoff, the Swedes coming to center ice. Will they get a goal in this game? That becomes a question. There's the shot. It drifts by Mushkin. And to the far boards now. After it is Lundholm, comes out near the blue line. There Erickson has it. Lundholm against the boards. He's being held in there. Uh, they kick away at it. Finally, it's Schluchtoff who gets it out to center ice. Back now for Moline, number 23. He's over the line. He flips it in. A bouncing puck scooped up off the ice by Mushkin. Fed into the corner. Now out to center ice. Taken for the Soviets by Sterikov. Over the line for Balderas. In deep. That's Erickson. Erickson being checked on the play. Balderas. Balderas behind the net. Schwarzoff is in there as well. They'll pin it in with 30 seconds left and try and hold it. Now it's poke free. Back into the crowd again. After it there is Erickson. Comes out loose. Now out to the point. There's Vasilia, number six. His shot's right on, juggled by Lindbergh, and he holds on for the faceoff. 18 seconds left. During our second intermission, we're going to be speaking with Brian O'Neill, the executive vice president of the National Hockey League. Bill Inkle will have a feature on the Olympics and what they will mean to the village of Lake Placid. And of course, we'll have second period highlights, which means another how many goals? Five goals of the Soviet Union. Bernie Pascal will have those for us. Nine to nothing, the score. On the face off, down over the line comes Norberg. Norberg going into the corner. On him is Starikov. Norberg now out in front, the quick shot, and that's blocked by Schluchtoff. Now out at center ice, Balderas takes that one going backwards. He's over the line. Here's the shot, and it trips over top of the net just as the horn sounds to end the second period. And it now becomes a question of just how many will the Soviets get? Soviets completely dominating the period. They have the puck. They've had the puck since the beginning of the hockey game. Now they're, they're, they have Sweden down so much that they're doing things that they normally wouldn't do. We see Balderas a little spin around to pick up a pass. We see Maltsev turning around. He goes one on one with a Swedish defender trying to score a goal going backwards. And now they're just joshing and playing around. They're loose, moving that puck. They have it all the time. It's only going to be a question of how many goals they can score. Well, Sweden outshot the Soviet Union 8 to 7 in that second period, but on the seven shots that the Soviets got, they got five goals. They lead this one 9 to nothing after two periods of play. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Man invented the wheel for transportation, but soon he craved a wheel for recreation, too. That's how. 
Uniroyal Laredo's became man's biggest, baddest, wildest line of recreation vehicle tires. On or off the road in mud or sand, Uniroyal Laredo's dig and grip and look unspeakably marvelous on vans and pickups and all out 4x4s. See the Uniroyal Laredo's, an unspeakably tough line of tires. The soft touch royale The soft touch royale The soft touch They sell royale bathroom tissue The one you want for the soft touch the birth date of hockey in the Soviet Union, February 22, 1946. 34 years ago, the Soviets first got involved in organized hockey, and while they will not have a gold medal here at the Lake Placid Olympics, there's no question they'll certainly have the silver medal. They've overpowered Sweden in the game today. They lead 9-0 after the 40 minutes of play. We'll have highlights of the second period coming up a little later during this intermission but right now let's go back to Lloyd. Well there are a lot of good players on the American, Canadian and Swedish teams here in Lake Placid, players who might one day end up in the National Hockey League. Brian O'Neill, the executive vice president of the National Hockey League, tells us now just how he views the Olympics. This interview was done last week. Well, the attention of the world has been here in Lake Placid, New York, for these 13th Winter Olympics. And I think that much of the world has to be tremendously impressed with the way the hockey tournament has gone. I'm sure that the National Hockey League has been very impressed, and uh, the executive vice president of the NHL, Brian O'Neill, has been watching a little bit of it, and I know that you have to be looking ahead uh, to what the NHL might be able to reap from this. And, of course, you're always looking for the players coming up, and I think uh, you've seen quite a few that you'd like to have. Well, Ron, there are a tremendous number of hockey players that our clubs already have either on their lists or have their eye on. And I think if you want to find NHL personnel, most of them are right down here. So uh, I decided to come down and see what all the action's about. I've been watching it on television, and uh, it's good to see it live, and that's why I'm here. You know, uh, you see games like the Czechoslovakia-USA game, Canada play. There's been a great deal of concern about where our players are going to come from. Uh, people have expressed concern that they're not developing properly anymore. But you see something like this, I think uh, you have to say, well, we're doing something right. Well, I think they are. <coughs> the only thing about it is, Ron, <coughs> excuse me, is that we're dealing with an Olympic situation. And uh, we are looking at the U.S. and the Canadian teams that have both been almost the, the hothouse type of treatment. And uh, there's no question of the, about it. The coaching they, they're getting is superb. And if we could uh, uh, count on all of our young players that are coming up for development to get that type of training, that type of hothouse treatment, I think we would get the results that we're seeing right here today. You're getting the university kid. Uh, do, you, do you feel that the university kid in the States and in Canada can develop uh, as well as a, as a junior player, a junior A player? Well, I don't think there's any question about it if they get the proper type of training. The, uh, the only problem with the university youngsters is that they're not getting enough ice time. Now, the, the lads that are playing for these teams have had a great deal of ice time, and it shows that if they get that type of opportunity, that they're every bit as good as players that are being developed through the juniors. Could you foresee the day when the National Hockey League might be able to back a, a national team like this, or is this something that just is, uh, you'd prefer to stay away from? Oh, I think it's, it's an area in which we ought not to be involved at all. I think we have an obligation to support, uh, certainly financially, to some extent, the, uh, the work of the Olympic movement, but uh, I don't believe the National Hockey League should ever become involved with any uh, national teams, uh, either in the United States or in Canada. Brian, thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy the games as much as we have so far. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of them. Brian O'Neill, the Executive Vice President of the National Hockey League. Well, mayhem still reigns here in Lake Placid. The downtown is uh, filled with people at this moment, the downtown area. Now, of course, traffic has been blocked off. Uh, things are settling down a little bit, as you can see, but the crowds are still milling about, uh, anxious to celebrate the victory of the U.S. gold medal uh, that was won this afternoon, and we'll have the medal presentations for you here on CTV in our live coverage a little later in the day. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Esso salutes the savers. 
Esso salutes Katherine Anderson for insisting on a furnace tune-up at least once a year. And George Beck for replacing his old furnace with one that uses oil more efficiently. And the Oslers for installing a screen that prevents heat loss up the chimney. People like these look to Esso because they know Esso research results in products and services that can help them save. Esso, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. changing world, Pontiac takes on the full-size competition and wins. Hey, Pontiac! You got it! With available 4.4-liter V8, no other North American full-size car with a gasoline engine gets better ratings. Drive a winner. A Pontiac mileage maker. Nobody started fighting Pontiac! You got it, Pontiac! On this Canadian destroyer, about 250 men work as a team with some of the most advanced electronic equipment in the world, helping to keep Canada strong. If you've got what it takes, there may be a future for you in Maritime Command, full-time or part-time. There's no life like it. There's no life like it. No, there's no life like it. Ask us about you. You'll find us under Recruiting in the Yellow Pages. Do you know him? Playing golf, maybe. But here, my little ski team needs this, the American Express card. It gives a family on vacation a great feeling of security. It can handle anything from ski lodges and lessons <laughs> to emergency check cashing and plane tickets home. To apply for a card, look for this display wherever the card is welcomed. The American Express card. Don't no leave home without, without it. it. The view from outside the Olympic Center here in Lake Placid as the snow falls gently in the fading afternoon. And inside, the game between Russia and Sweden. And that is one of the new buildings in Lake Placid, constructed especially for these Olympics. Why do towns all over the world want the games? Well, Bill Inkall went out to find out for us. Lake Placid is a beautiful little community. It's right on the doorstep of the Adirondack Mountains. Quiet. People who live here the year-round say it's the only place to go that if Ireland was a little bit of heaven, then surely this must be the other part. Most of the people here at the 13th Winter Olympic Games have to agree. The mountains are very picturesque, and the people are coming here and have nothing but praise for the scenery. But you know, they said a lot of people would be here. They'd come by the thousands. They'd jam the community. The restaurants would be crowded. Storekeepers would make a big killing. But that really hasn't materialized, at least not up to this point. Main Street here is very busy today. It's uh, sort of unusual because, at most, there are just sparse crowds here and there except for the weekend. What about crowds, Dad? Are they as large as you anticipated? Well, it's, that's hard to say. We really didn't know what to expect. We had no idea what to expect. All right, as They've a resident... certainly been large. <laughs> as a resident of this area, would you go through it again? I think so, sure. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. We've all had an awfully good time. Some of these stores are renting for about twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. It depends on who you're talking with. Some of the real estate operators say that one store was renting for as much as sixty-five thousand dollars for the month. Now, whether they're going to make that back is dubious at the present time. I don't think so. But you know, despite all their warts and moles and blemishes, Lake Placid will still continue to exist. The world will go on. The people, after this Olympic brouhaha is over, will go about their collective ways, just as they did in Montreal in 1976. And it's almost like Montreal, because now some of the people are questioning how come these games cost two or three times more than was really bargained for. Not only that, but the storekeepers here, who thought they were going to make a whole bushel of gold, now find it's more difficult than the athletes who participated. Thank you, Bill. Coming up next, Bernie Pascual. We'll have our second period highlights of the game between the Soviet Union and Sweden. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Greatest. Go get light. Coca-Cola. 
this could be public enemy number one. The heat of dryers, irons, rollers can drain hair of body. Flex instant conditioner builds body that holds up under heat. Revlon's unique formula has balsam, protein, and five special conditioners that penetrate hair to build body that holds up under heat. Leaves hair healthy looking, shiny, and flexible. Get Flex Balsam and Protein Instant Conditioner in three formulas. Regular, extra body, and for oily hair, Flex Light from Revlon. Beautiful. Earlier today, the USA won the gold medal at the Olympic hockey competition with a 4-2 win over Finland. The game underway right now, the Soviet Union and Sweden for the silver and bronze medal. And it's really been no contest. The Soviets scoring five goals in the second period. They lead nine to nothing. Krutov scores the sixth goal. Number nine, Krutov beats Lindbergh, the Swedish goaltender. Lindbergh comes out, takes a swing at the stick and puck of Krutov, misses. Krutov just backhands the puck slowly into the net. That made it 6 nothing for the Soviets. Vortsev made it 7 nothing before this play here. Zlutov, Balderis, and Svortsev. Svortsev, number 26. Zlutov, number 22. A pretty passing play between the three Soviet players, and it was 8 nothing. Zlutov combining with Helmut Balderis and Svortsev. Now there's Zlutov, the big 6-3 center. Balderis, Svortsev now back to the slot and a high shot past Lindbergh. The final goal of the second period, Fedosov, the defenseman, intercepts a pass and backhands it past Swedish goaltender Pelle Lindbergh. And there is Fedosov moving in, and he sends that shot into the Swedish net. Soviet struck early in the first period after 36 seconds, and then they scored early in the second at the 33-second mark. And they have that commanding 9-0 lead. Fedosov, one of the outstanding young defensemen with the Soviets, moves in here and just lifts it on the backhand drive into the net. And that's how it stands right now. A nine-goal spread with the Soviet Union leading Sweden. And we'll be back at the Olympic Fieldhouse for the play-by-play -play of the third period. And a reminder, this is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Canada, get going. Go for the savings and values you'll find at Sears right now all across Canada. Save 20% on men's premier dress shirts and save $10 on men's leather shoes. Save $50 on a Sears Kenmore washer dryer team and save 22% or more on a selection of sleep sets. See these great values and more right now in Sears new catalog and Sears retail stores. So let's go Canada, get saving at Sears. On Saturday and Sunday, March 1st and 2nd, CTV Sports presents exciting coverage of the World Cup giant slalom races from Mont St. Anne, Quebec. The best in the world will be on hand, including Ingemar Stenmark of Sweden, Cindy Nelson of the United States, Kathy Kreiner, and Peter Monod of Canada. Both the men's and women's events will be featured on this weekend coverage of the World Cup giant slalom races, a CTV Sports special presentation. Esso salutes the savers. Esso salutes Chris Brown for switching to a friction-reducing oil that can save him gasoline. And the Erskins for keeping their wheels aligned to save on tire wear. And the Adolfs for changing their air filter regularly so their car can run more smoothly and efficiently. People like these look to Esso because they know Esso research results in products and services that can help them save. Esso, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. Well, the celebrations continue at the 1980 Winter Olympics for the United States gold medal in ice hockey. Their first in 20 years, the first time in 20 years that the Soviets are not the uh, defending Olympic champions. They won four gold medals in a row. But right now, the Soviets en route to their silver medal finish. Nice and all set to go. There you see Mishkin. In the Soviet goal, Trechak on the bench for this hockey game. The last time he started a hockey game, and I guess of this level, was against the NHL All-Stars in the Challenge Company, registered a 6-0 shutout in that game. Well, how much confidence they had in Trechak was shown at the World's Championships last year in Moscow. Of the 12 games in Moscow in the World's Championships last spring, 
Michigan played in the last 10 minutes of the last game when the Soviets had an 8-1 lead. The rest of the time, Trechak went the whole way. Of course, he came in uh, in the game against the U.S. after Trechak had let in a couple of soft goals. A story on Trechak, of course, and I think it bears repeating. The feeling in international hockey circles is he has been used far, far too much over the years that he's probably just a worn out, burnt out goaltender. He has not played well for about a year. He plays in the neighborhood of 80 to 90 games a year. In his own team, he has played all but two games this year. That's for the Central Red Army and regular league play, plus all of their international endeavors, which includes the Rudy Bravo and the and the games uh, against uh, in the Isbestia tournament. But play's underway here, a 9 nothing hockey game. The question we have to ask ourselves is, can Sweden get a goal? Thomas Janssen out to center ice, beats it ahead. That is uh, Mats Alberg over the line, but Benesov is in, and he falls. Here's a chance for Alberg. He rolls it out in front, but it comes all the way back to Janssen. Janssen moving in. Trying to get in front of that net, now doing a good job of it too, but he's finally hauled down, and there will be a penalty to Vladimir Petrov. So Petrov will be going off. A reminder that tonight, following the national news, the 1980 Olympic highlights, that's the full 13 days of competition here in Lake Placid. All of our reporters will be on hand for this final show. We'll try to bring you all of the highlights, the many, many highlights that there have been in this competition. Canada's medal performances. That's tonight following the national news on CTV. The power play from the faceoff. Back to the blue line. This is ball team number nine winding up the shot just wide of the net. Behind the net now. It's poked into the corner, moved along the board. Ball team just pokes it down behind the net. Taking it there is Soderstrom. Soderstrom behind the net now working for it is Erickson. Hakan Erickson behind the net again. And now for the Soviets, it is Starikov. Out to center ice, it's dropped back to the blue line. Jan Erickson for Valtin. Valtin being forced way back in his own zone by Maltsev. Now Valtin, the rangy hockey player, shoots it out over center ice. Soderstrom's over the line. Soderstrom trying to get it over to the left wing. It's intercepted by Maltsev. Maltsev to Krutov. Krutov over the line. Trying to get it in front of the net. He's knocked down. Nearly hooked it into an open net there as he's cutting through the slot. Behind the net. For Sweden, it is Norberg. Norberg at center ice. To the line, Norberg. The candling drops it off. They try to flip it out. Krutov goes down. No penalty on that as Krutov was trying to break out with the puck that was intercepted. Now Anderson, Stoney Anderson, over the line. Erickson into the corner. Anderson coming in as well. Puck hops high in the air. Moline traps it at the blue line, wrists it in towards the goal. And it is taken for the Soviets by Sterikov. Now it's Erickson. Erickson winding up, and that shot is blocked by Sterikov. Hops high in the air. Everybody's lost sight of it. Where'd it go? The rafters? <laughs> Into the stands and the fans after. You were mentioning, you were mentioning about uh, Trechak playing so much. One of the things that uh, people feel internationally, they feel that the Soviets haven't developed the number of goaltenders that they have the, the other players. You know, a Makarov comes out of nowhere. Krutov, Kazatnov, Fedosov. All young hockey players, you wonder where they all come from, but you never see anybody play in these tournaments except Trechak and Michigan, and you wonder how many good goaltenders they have in the Soviet Union in comparison with their other skaters. 26 seconds left of the power play. Now is turning and coming to center ice is Moline. He stops up at center ice, drops the puck off, comes over the line, shooting it in there is Lindholm in the corner. Backhanded around the net, Per Buchen. They jam it in there, and it'll be held with 12 seconds left in the power play by Per Vukin inside the Soviet zone. Per Vukin from Moscow Dynamo. He's won a couple of Olympic golds on the national team since 1976. It was the last Olympic year, of course. So and to take the draw now will be Leif Holmgren. In the faceoff, it's back behind the net. Per Vulcan, Per Vulcan off the boards, but it's intercepted. Alberg, Alberg looking for a man, gets it to Johnson. Johnson winding up, but the shot is off the stick glove of goaltender Michigan. Back along the boards now. Coming to center ice is Sportsoff. Sportsoff getting it through the line. Now they come in, there's a player tripped up. Sportsoff can't control it. The Swede's coming right back out again. And getting it is Sportsoff again. Ilya Letanov over skates it. Back inside the zone. Sportsoff again. Sportsoff over to this side. Taken by Vasilyev. 
Out to center ice. That's off a stick. Now Naslund turning. He's got some speed. Comes to the line and his shot is off the leg of Billy. Left it off and drifts wide of the net. Cleared around the boards on the far side. Taken by Schwartzoff. Now it's Makarov. Now Schluktov. Schluktov trying to work his way free. It's stopped by the defense. And turning back is Weinstock. There's Soderstrom. Over the line. He stopped. Here we come again. Makarov. Makarov. To Balderas. Balderas working to his backhand. And he is upended. And out in center ice trying to stick handle and unable to control it was Norberg. But here comes Thomas Johnson. He's got that shot. It's just wide of the net off a stick. Ends up in the corner. Cleared into the corner on this side. Norberg. But the Soviets have got it. Out of center ice comes Golikov. Golikov to the line. Back to Balderas. And there's the shot. Good save there by Lindbergh on a good play. Back they come again. Over the line. Cleared in front of the net. And the Soviets again wheel away with it. Balderas. Balderas. Just stick handling. Tried to get over the line. He stopped. Golikov. Golikov. Dropping it back. Goes out and off in front of his own net. Being four checked by Hakan Eriksson. Out at center ice. Waltine comes right back in again. Waltine getting set in front of the net. He shoots. And he's just wide on the far side. Now out at center ice. It's Lundholm. Lundholm dropping it back. Again, Sweden trying to get out. Moline now has it. Moline over for Lundqvist. Lundqvist falls and slides right into the referee, Bernie Haley. And uh, that's a little dangerous with the skates up. But he, everybody's all right. The faceoff will come in the center ice area. As you look at Pelle Lindbergh, who will be on his way, I imagine, next season to the Philadelphia Flyers. Well, Lindbergh makes the stop, and he's had lots of work today. The backhand's giving him quite a bit of trouble. Mishkin having to make a good save on Valtine, who broke in, the captain of Sweden, trying to put Sweden on the scoreboard, get some respectability here in the third period. A reminder to stay tuned for Cease TV. Full coverage of the Olympics continuing right through to the time following the national news. But we'll be staying on the air after this game for the medal presentations for the bobsledders and, of course, that gold medal to the U.S. hockey team. Back inside the blue line, Vasiliev. Vasiliev circling back, working with Starikov on defense. Petrov's out now. Petrov and against the board, the puck is cleared down the ice. Moline will go back for it. Number 23, Moline, back to touch it. No icing on the play. Mihailov trying to feed Harlem off there. Puck goes against the board. Petrov jamming it in, rolls it into the corner. Mihailov, now behind the net, it's Erickson. Erickson, starting out, out to center ice. Here is Moline, over to the far side, digging in. There is Lindholm, he's behind the net. Moline now, he tried to get it out in front. It comes to Harlamov, he overskated it. Jam in against the boards. And it's now Alberg. Alberg trying to get a rink wide pass. That's intercepted by Petrov. Harlamov trying to get out. He was checked by Alberg, lost his balance. And Johnson covers up. Behind the net, Johnson. Johnson to the far side. Cleared out to center ice. This will go all the way down the ice. No icing. They say that Vasiliev just did not make any effort to touch that one, so play will go on. They're just playing this one out. Buck is inside the zone. There's a chance for Sweden out in front of the net on the short side, and Holmgren had the good chance, but he just got it up on the chest of Mushkin. Now it's down into the Swedish zone. Back to get it will be Weinstock. He touches it. It's called on the icing. Face off in the Soviet end. 9 nothing Soviet. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. <laughs> But, sir, hmm. this new AES word processor is going to save us time and money, hmm. even for a company our size. Because it's much more than a typewriter, we can double our productivity. Watch. It can change sentences, rearrange whole paragraphs, all in seconds. And it types perfect copies at 540 words a minute. Welcome to the firm. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Frisley. <laughs> So the faceoff will be to the right of the Soviet goal. Take the draw for Sweden. Hakan Eriksson, he gets the draw. Now taken by Söderström. He's unable to control it. Comes up to center ice. Maltsev, Maltsev trying to beat Trudov on the wing. But the Swedes cover up once again. Now it is Eriksson. Eriksson along the boards. Goes off Lebedev's stick. He has to chase it down on the wing. But also there is Eriksson, Jan Eriksson. He clears it into Soviet territory. Vidya Lettinov behind his net. 
Clears it into the corner, taken there by Erickson. Huck and Erickson trying to get in front, trying to push it through there. Finally ends up on the stick of Per Wolken. Per Wolken behind the net on this side now. Billy Litvinov at center ice, knocked out by Waltin. He throws it to the far wing, over the line. There comes Erickson. He stopped, and here come the Soviets once again. It's, Mal it's over the line. Maltsev, Maltsev going into the slot. Cuts behind the net now. He's got Lebedev out in front. He rolls it out to the blue line. There's the shot, and it bounces wide as Lebedev deflected it. Now cleared around the boards, and Billy Litvinov was way in on the play. Icing will be the call here again as we get Pervokin touching it and the faceoff back in Swedish territory. Well, again, we saw Maltsev trying his little spinorama. I think he's trying to just prove something today. You know, the story goes that that uh, in, in early Canadian hockey, the Cyclone Taylor scored a goal moving backwards. Well, he's trying to perfect the move, and we've watched him in practice here try it. He moves to the defense. He does a complete spinorama with the puck, and as he's turning around and moving backwards, he just backhands the puck all in one motion. And he's trying that now late in the hockey game with a score of 9-0. And trying to get out of his own end and finally getting the puck out is Thomas Erickson has cleared into Soviet territory. Behind the net for the S Swedes, it's Anderson getting it to the boards on this side for Lundqvist. His shot is right on. Anderson right there, but he couldn't deflect it. Now Anderson again against the boards at the blue line for Erickson. And it's knocked out by Shlukov out at center ice ahead for Kazadinov. Kazadinov over the line along with Shlukov who digs in in the corner after it. On top of him is Erickson. Puck comes out in front. Svortsov, Svortsov working past Erickson behind the net. Anderson clearing it around, picking it off there is Lundholm. He gets it out to center ice, back for for the Soviets. Kazadinov also in there is Fedezov. Fedezov comes away with a puck ahead for Balderas, and it was off his stick and down into Swedish territory. Weinstock back to get it. Weinstock behind his net. Weinstock at center ice, that long lead pass. Alberg, Alberg over the line. He falls, gets the pass away, but it went off a stick out to center ice, and Naslin turns. Naslin shooting it in, blocked easily at the goal by Mushkin. High in the air it comes. Fedizov's got it. Fedizov from behind his own net, starting out. Balderas flying at center ice, that crisscrossing motion at center ice as Fedizov circles back now. Over to the far side, taken there by Sportsov. Back on this side, Fedizov. Fedizov, as the Soviets just play with the puck. Fedizov, the stick handling, putting on a little demonstration. Now decides to put it out to center ice for Makarov. He's stopped by Weinstock. Puck comes loose. Now down over the line for the Swedes is Naslin. Naslin cutting in front of the net. And the puck is dropped back. Here's the chance for the Swedes in front. They shoot, they score! As Albert got that pass and put it in. And the shutout is broken. The Swedes have scored. It draws a roar from the crowd here. The crowd so far have been sitting on their hands since the uh, United States won the gold medal. But the drop pass, keeping the puck in at the point. Hallberg moving here with a quick shot to Michigan's glove hand. He gets a piece of it, it hits the crossbar and then drops down behind him. But Sweden is now on the scoreboard with their first goal. There's the glove on it, hits the crossbar, drops right down into the corner of the net. Mats Hallberg, 33-year-old forward from Lexan, Sweden. This is his sixth, well, he's been six times in the World Hockey Tournament, starting back in 1973. Oh, sliding hard into the boards. That was Norberg inside the blue line. The Soviets were playing around with a puck in their own end. That's offside. And uh, finally, something was going to happen. They have just quit really doing anything except playing around. It's like shinny out there right now. Well, I, I feel, you know, being in the coaching business, you feel sorry for Tommy Sandlin, the coach of the Swedish national team. Your team is down 9 nothing at the end of two periods. I mean, what do you what do you say to him? And about the only thing you can say to the hockey club is, hey, let's try to win one period in the game. And Sweden is winning this period so far 1-0 after losing the first two, 9 nothing. Over the line comes Norberg into his own zone. Drops the puck off. Now Valtin out at center ice, moving up is Erickson. Hocken Erickson over the line now. Erickson rolling it in front and it's taken away from the goal mouth area by Vasiliev. Now the Soviets out at center ice, down over the line. It is Golikov. Golikov stops up in the corner. Alexander Golikov finding a man in the slot and Vasiliev was breaking in there. And now the Swedes have got the puck. 
Alberg for Lundqvist and Holmgren at 9.17. That's the goal as Waltine gets it in front of his net, clears it out to center ice, looked ahead now, the Swedes come in, Lundqvist gets the shot, it's gloved by Mushkin, he hangs on for the faceoff. 9-1 to the score, the Soviets leading with 9.27 left in the hockey game. And the goal seems to have given Sweden a little bit of a lift here. They're beginning to carry the play a little more. We see Mishkin ducking, trying to see that first shot coming through. There's the shot, the goal just getting under the crossbar. Mishkin gets a piece of it, first Swedish goal. Mishkin has had it pretty easy so far tonight. And Lindbergh has been shelled. Face off, they'll do that one again. There's Vladimir Petrov. 1973 at a world tournament, he scored 18 goals in 10 games at that tournament. Wonder how many of them are against Japan. Puck fired off the board. Soviets beat Japan in this tournament 16 to nothing. Could have been 30 to nothing, I thought. Banged off the boards, out to center ice. Petrov's got the puck. Petrov beating now. A good pass to Mihailov, who's busting in, and it rolls right to the goal mouth. Uh, doing a good defensive job there was Moline, and it's out at center ice once again. Now back into the Swedish zone. Eriksson over to the far side. Moline. Moline working to center ice. Moline shooting it in. And behind the Soviet net, taken by Pervukin. Pervukin, Harlamov, Pervukin again. Pervukin leading the rush at center ice. Pervukin busting down on the left side, makes the shot, now tries to sweep the defense. He's got men up front, and he rolled it in as Mihailov was looking for his second goal of the game. There's Tretjak on the bench. Pervukin moving right in, again the defenseman for the Soviets, taking all kinds of chances, lugging the puck out. When he moved out behind the net, he threw it back from the same side he was going in. They don't like to go around the net and throw it from the far side. They like to throw it, catch the goaltender moving to the far side. To the back of Tomas Jonsson, drafted by the Islanders. We see a little bit of him. They already have Anders Kaller. Here's a shot cleared away from the goal mouth area by Weinstock. On the far boards, Weinstock after, players go down, puck is loose, and Weinstock comes away with it, puts it out on the boards, it's batted out to center ice, trying to look, hook it around, and does Holmgren now, he goes into the corner, Holmgren still with that puck, being checked as he's ridden in against the boards by Kazadonov. And finally, it's taken by Lebedev, Lebedev to Maltsev, Maltsev at center ice, this is a two-on-one with Krutov. Maltsev over the line, feeds it through, Krutov was in too deep. Coming across to get it is Lebedev. We may have a roughing penalty being called here. And <laughs> Krutov, I don't think, knows what the heck is going on. In any case, 8.02 left, 9 to 1 Soviets. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Do you know me? I won a few gold medals in the 1968 Olympics as an amateur. But skiing for me now is a business. And for that, I need an American Express card and for the receipts that they sent back with the bill. Believe me, those records are easier to keep than speed records in the downhill. To apply for a card, look for this display wherever the card is welcomed. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Soviets playing a man short here. Roughing penalty to Krutov. He's in. The puck is along the board. There's Shlutsov. The big fella ducks away from a check. Even though they were shorthanded the way they're playing right now. Behind the net now. Shlutsov still with that puck. That big long reach of his. Hard to check. Still has the puck. Trying to muscle it in against the boards. And finally, Hockett Erickson gets it. Takes it around the net. Comes to center ice with it. Erickson. Erickson to the line. Erickson still with that puck. Drops it off for Sutterstrom. And it winds up back at center ice. Walt in. Baltine, over for Norberg, 7.22 left in the hockey game. At center ice, the handling down to the line is Norberg. Norberg still with the puck, he goes down on the play against Schluckdorf. And it's Vasilia. Vasilia just leisurely sliding it across the ice. Now back to Vasilia. Vasilia slides it out to center ice. And back down into the Swedish zone. The Swedes will come away now. It's Lundholm with it. Lundholm out to the blue line to center ice. That's Erickson. Erickson in over the line. A shot is wide of the net. Comes off the dasher behind the net. Down goes Lundholm as he was going in. He's all right. The Soviets start away. Vasiliev against the boards. He's checked there by Lundholm. Out in front and panning on it was Lundholm. Rolls out in front of the net, but saving that particular effort was Starikov. 
Tarakov over for Shluktov. Shluktov back in for Vasilyev. Vasilyev ahead for Starikov, who just deflected over center ice. And it's Erickson. Erickson to Moline. Moline ahead to the line now for Lundqvist. He comes into the corner. Lundqvist. Lundqvist out to the blue line. Moline back into the corner for Pitt Lundholm. And that pass is intercepted by Shluktov. And Shluktov's at center ice. Shluktov over against the boards. Back forward is Anderson. A rink-wide pass. The Swedes changing on the go. The penalty has expired. And out over center ice now. The Swedes. That's Naslund, but he can't get through. The puck is cleared into the Soviet zone. And back to get it to Starikov. Starikov. He's checked. Puck comes right in front of that. There's the shot. A rebound. And they score. It was stopped and then seemed to hop over. Goaltender. Mushkin. And the Swedes are on the board for their second goal. Sweden coming back, getting some measure of revenge here late in the third period. The first shot, block continuing on. Michigan can't seem to kill the puck. There's the second opportunity coming, the puck hopping over top of him and into the corner of the net. Another look at it, the first shot coming, he stops the first one, goes down, but doesn't know where that puck is. Then there's a little bit of the play coming in late. Albert just putting that puck over top. Puck is cleared down, Holmgren got the goal. At 14-21, the assist going to Naslund. And it is 9-2 now with 5-21 remaining in the game. Lindbergh out of the net. Naslund kicking it along the boards. Soviets in for checking. Cleared into the corner. There it's Johnson. Johnson out the center ice for Naslund over the far boards and off the boards and into the Soviet zone past Alberg. And it's called on the icing. And a face-off down in the Swedish end of the ice with 5.07 left. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Guys, look at your road report. We're snowed in. Everything's closed. Yeah? Yeah. That means we're going to have to stay. Oh. That means we're going to miss work tomorrow. Oh. We're here, as the boys broken away. Careful, Jeannie. A little skiing, love good food, and a little Molson export ale. That's what you're going to say. Hello, Jeannie. Hello, Jeannie. You're not going to believe this, but... um. You're not, not going to believe, believe this, but... Uh, good luck. <laughs> Molson export ale. It keeps on tasting great. Face off, chasing the puck down inside the zone is Erickson. Puck is cleared around the boards, and the Soviets will come out to center ice with it. Makarov, Makarov ahead to Golikov. Golikov over the line, he goes down. Puck winds up in the corner. Makarov after it, behind the net. Checking there is Sutterstrom, number 21, but it's Alexander Golikov who gets it. Golikov beating it over to the far side. Players go down on the play. Erickson gets it. Erickson feeding it back into the corner. Makarov's in there as well. And the puck is flipped out to center ice with 4.23 left in the game. Now turning. Coming in over the line. Alexander Golikov with lots of room. He shoots off. It's saved there by Lindbergh, but he actually shot after the second move, the second unnecessary move. I think the Soviets feel they have enough. There's a shot. It's gloved by Mushkin. And he holds on. We'll have a face-off in the Soviet end. Sweden getting caught in the middle of a change. Golikov jumping on top of the puck. Moving inside, getting the opportunity. Made the move to the outside, then came back to the inside. We see the puck just rolling wide of the net on Lindbergh, but a good move by Golikov. A very alert move, jumping in when Sweden get caught. Everybody over at their bench in the middle of the change. Nine to two, the score. The Soviets leading. Per Buchen, the top scorer, the defenseman. He has four assists in this game. Well, we tried to get our cameraman there, was putting a face mask over top of the camera at the end, tried to give our fans a look at what the goaltender sees from behind that mask. Out at center ice now, here is Mihailov. Mihailov along with Petrov, Mihailov to Petrov, and he fanned on it. The loose puck is picked up, thrown into the slot, but tipped away and out to center ice. Back with it now, Harlamov, number 17. Over to the far side. Now cleared into the Soviet zone, the city have around to the far boards. Kazadinov let it go by. The shot rips in from the point. And Pe Petisov has got it. Not Petisov, but Petrov. Petrov clearing it up to the blue line again. Anderson with a shot, and he's wide with it. Now cleared wide of the net again, out to the blue line to center ice and all the way down into the Swedish zone. Back to get it is Erickson. Erickson golfs it to the blue line, not out, kept in by Kazadinov, rolled in front of the net and hoisted up into the air and down the ice by the Swedish defense. And they'll go for a change as way out of his net there is uh, Mushkin. He holds it himself in the corner 
We'll get a face off in his own end of the ice with 313 left. The closing ceremonies tonight, live on CTV. The colorful closing ceremonies from the Olympic Field House here. It's always an emotional moment. 9.30 tonight, Eastern Time, live across the CTV network. Maltsev on the far boards, behind the net. Taken by Vasilyev. Now over for Starikov. Starikov out of center ice, it's off a skate. Naslin couldn't control it. Jonsson back in his own end. Over to the far side. Weinstock. Weinstock out at center ice. All Barrick. He tried to feed Naslund on that play. Naslund cutting in and behind the net after it. But the defense covers up. Krutov. Krutov trying to get loose, but is taken away by All Barrick. All Barrick clearing it into the side of the net. And it's blocked by the defense. Flipped over to the far side. And Maltsev's got it at center ice. Maltsev on the right hand boards. Gives it to Krutov. Now that is Lebedev. Lebedev clearing it out to center ice. Then Vasilyev deflected it off his skate back inside the zone. 2.30 left. The faceoff will be outside the Swedish blue line on the offside. Valery Vasilyev, who is just going off now, the veteran Soviet defenseman, exchanged sticks with Dan Delvis of the Canadian team after the Canada-Soviet game. And Dan took it into our dressing room. We have a gauge there where you can check the curvature and the width of it. And both the width of the stick and the curvature were about a half inch more than normal. It's just a phenomenal blade that he has on it. But this seems accepted in European hockey. Looks like you could have called everybody for a stick measurement after that game. Not only who was it you were after, uh, Golikov, Alexander Golikov. Now from inside their own zone. Fervokin out at center ice, Waltin, Waltin shooting it back in again. Digging in for it is Billy Lentinov in the corner. He slides it along the board, Swartz off on the far side. Billy Lentinov moving in as well as the puck is cleared around the board for Fervokin on this side. Fervokin behind the net, Billy Lentinov. Less than two minutes left in the game now. Into the corner it goes, out in front, intercepted by Billy Lentinov. He gets it to the blue line, not out, but deflects past Alberg. And here come the Soviets again out of their own end, Swartzov. Schwarzoff fighting his way to the line. He get in ahead of the puck. A delayed offside, but the Swedes brought it right back out again. And it's bounced back into Soviet territory with 138 left in the hockey game. Now Schluchtoff to Balderas. Balderas had it poked off his stick. Anderson on the far side. There to the, to the boards. Schwarzoff. Schwarzoff. Coming down over the line. Trying to get through is Moline. Schluchtoff on the far side. Into the corner it goes. Behind the net, taken by Per Vulcan. He can't control it as the Swedes get it once again. Back out at the blue line. It's fired in by Moline. Behind the net. They're jousting for it as Bailey left it off. It goes to the far boards for Schwarzoff. Schluchtoff out at center ice for Per Vulcan. Per Vulcan just pokes it away. And we have less than a minute mercifully left in this hockey game as the puck is cleared over to the far side. There's Moline. He took a shot and he's wide of the net with it. Now it's Erickson. Erickson cutting in front of the net on the short side and it winds up in the netting with 39 seconds left in the game. Soviets 9, Sweden 2. He looks a little bored, doesn't he? Well, at 9-2, but give Sweden credit. They're down 9-0 at the end of two periods and to come back and really, there's no pressure on the Soviets to add to the total, but they came back and they scored two goals. The Soviets didn't get any in the third, and that's all you can hope for in a hockey game like this. Saw Thomas Erickson, a 20-year-old defenseman, has been drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers. He went to the bench, number 27 for Sweden. At center ice, Johnson. Johnson over the line. Here's the shot, and it just wide. The rebound up on the short side, and hugging the post there was Mushkin. Now in against the boards with 22 seconds left. And the puck is held for a face-off to the left of the Soviet goal. Well, there's one of the American players. The celebration is on. They're waiting for the uh, for the uh, medal presentation, of course. That's Pavlich. Be lots of emotion in here in a few minutes. The presentation of the goal to the United States. Now Vasiliev moving in. Vasiliev getting set. He shoots. It's right on. That was sort of a half-hearted shot. Two seconds left. This game is over as the puck is fed out over center ice. The final score, 9-2. to two. So the medal standings are complete now for the Olympic ice hockey. The United States gold, the Soviet Union silver, 
And Sweden will get the bronze. Sweden throwing all their helmets up into the stands here, giving the fans their sticks, getting a big cheer from the United States fans that are in here, a standing ovation for the way they tried and worked here against the superior Soviet team this afternoon. They're all shaking hands. The captain, Mikhailov, going down the line, not too pleased. They played a great hockey game today, but they were a little too late. The great hockey game should have been against the United States. The United States winning the gold medal, Soviets winning the silver, the bronze medal going to Sweden. And who would have thought that at the beginning of the tournament? Well, the Soviets also throwing their sticks into the crowd. The Olympic tournament is done. The Soviets will get the silver. Tretjak on his way to the dressing room. They'll be returning in a few minutes for the Olympic presentation. Interestingly enough, for the scoring, when they get nine, usually somebody gets more than one goal, but it was not the case. Shluptov, Fedosov, Skortsov, Petrov, Makarov, Maltsev, Mihailov, Vasilyev, and Krudov got goals in the game. Four assists for Perbuk and Harlamov with two assists. Balderas with two assists. They were the only multi-point men in the game, so they spread it out. The final shots on goal, Sweden out shooting the Soviets in the final period, 13 to six, when it was all decided, the total shots on goal, Soviet Union 28 and Sweden 26. Well, there was no question about the result of the hockey game right from the beginning. The first two periods, Soviets had the puck all of the time, went ahead nine to nothing, and school was out when they went into the third period. It was just a matter of playing the last 20 minutes of this Olympic tournament. All right, final score here then, the Soviets 9, Sweden 2. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Esso salutes the savers. Esso salutes Terry Spensley for using a long life oil that also gives him super premium engine protection. And the coals on switching to radial tires that save them gasoline. And Alan Sirota for getting a regular engine tune-up to save him gasoline. People like these look to Esso because they know Esso research results in products and services that can help them save. Esso, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. The hockey competition all over at the Olympic Fieldhouse at Lake Placid earlier today. Team USA winning the gold medal with a 4-2 victory over Finland. And the game just witnessed the Soviet Union completely dominating Sweden building up a 9-0 lead, and then Sweden getting two goals in the third period. The final score was 9-2. Mats Alberg scored the first goal for Sweden as he sends it high into the net past Soviet goaltender Mishkin. Mats Alberg, number 12, combining with Lundqvist and Holmgren. That made it 9-1. And great response from the Swedish boosters here at the field house. But Alberg, a pretty goal, right in front, takes the pass from Lundqvist. Holmgren standing right in front of goaltender Mishkin. And uh, that gave the Swedish supporters something to cheer about after the Soviets had built up a 9-0 lead. And Alberg cutting the margin there, 9-1. The second goal by Sweden was scored at 14-21 of that third period. And it was scored by uh, Holmgren with Naslund getting the assist. Naslund is number 15. Holmgren is number 18 for Sweden. And you see the play developing in the Soviet zone. Alberg does a good job there of tying up the Soviet player. Holmgren moves in front of the net and picks up the shot from Naslund. And that took care of the scoring at the field house. The second goal to get by Mishkin, who played the entire game for Sweden. And a look at the replay again. Naslund shot. Leif Holmgren, number 18, moves right in front. Starikov, number 12, tries to uh, knock him off stride, but failed to do that. So Alberg and Holmgren score on the third period for Team Sweden. And the final score, the Soviets win it 9-2. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network.
This is Ron Roosh speaking to you again from the Olympic Fieldhouse. One of the great moments, of course, in the Olympics is the presentation of the medals. And in this crowd here, of course, the American flags. We're going to see a tremendous roar when the presentation of the gold medal to the U.S. hockey team is made. Also to be presented here in just a few moments will be the gold medals also for the bobsled. This afternoon's victory ceremonies will begin in just a few moments. At this time, we'd like to present our ceremonial band from the Crane School of Music in Potsdam. Their director, Dr. Rebecca Cole. Well, we're just about set for the presentation of the medals. Well, the parade of the athletes now. The presentation of the medals for hockey and four-man bobsled. During the games, the presentation of the medals has been taking place on Mirror Lake in Lake Placid. But as is traditional, the final medals of the games always are presented in the arena, and they are always the gold medals for hockey and for four-man sledding, traditionally the final events of an Olympic Games. State following the hockey game. I think there'll be some tears shed in this place before this afternoon is out. Presentation of the medals. It's been well attended the hockey the last couple of days during the medal run. Of course, it was impossible to find breathing room in this building for the United States games. Esso salutes the savers. Esso salutes Chris Brown for switching to a friction-reducing oil that can save him gasoline. And the Erskins for keeping their wheels aligned to save on tire wear. And the Adolfs for changing their air filter regularly so their car can run more smoothly and efficiently. People like these look to Esso because they know Esso research results in products and services that can help them save. Esso, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. Native National Olympic Committee, and we're going back to Ron Roosh and Tom Watt, who are there in the center in this emotional afternoon. And the U.S. Olympic team, as you see on your screen, that's Jim Craig, the goaltender, and here they come now, and listen to the crowd. Jim Craig waving as he comes on the ice. The rest of the team has not come out. They're coming out one at a time. into the crowd. The Soviets will be out shortly as well. I think, Ron, that's a little bit of a tribute. I think that's a little bit of a tribute to United States fans and the problems that we've had with the Soviets. I think that's a little support for the United States. I think that's a little support for the fans here because the Swedish team realizes what an effect the fans had on creating this medal-winning effort by the U.S. Olympic team. And look, as you saw, Jim Craig and Billy Lindberg, the Swedish goaltender, embrace here are the Soviets. They're on their way out. Craig shaking hands with Mihailov. Uh, the crowd clapping, chatting. We're number one. Tom, they just have to take a look at the way they want it. The come from behind efforts that they had. They showed true grit all the way through this tournament. And what do we got? We've got John Paul Souza, the stars and stripes forever. Could it be any better? There's my high off. 
from the Soviets. There's Mishkin, the young goaltender, shaking hands. Maltsev, Balderas with the glasses. The Soviet team congratulating the U.S. Olympic team. Certainly a truly great effort, a truly honest effort. There was no luck involved. They worked very hard for it, and they're getting the ovation. And basking in it. You don't win a gold medal from luck. You win a gold medal by a lot of dedication, very fit people, people that worked hard, people that are competitors, people that came from behind in three of the most important games of the tournament in the third period, late in the game, very, very competitive. They gave it the college try, and this Olympic gold medal is a very important event for all of hockey in the United States. We have to look back to 20 years through Squaw Valley, and oddly enough, that gold medal in 1960 went without the fanfare that this one has given them. Juan Antonio Salaro, International Olympic Committee member for Spain, and Raymond Gartner, International Olympic Committee member for Switzerland, will present the Olympic medals to the victors. Accompanied by Gunther Sametsky, President of the International Ice Hockey Federation. There are the medals, that's what it was all about. Even the girls holding them are pretty emotional about it all. Each member of the team will get a gold medal. Gold medal veterans, Stretch Jack and Mahalo. of the United States team. He's jumping up and down. He can't contain himself. Jim Craig, he's the first to go up and get the gold medal. And here they come. Every member. Harrington. Ramsey, Wells, I know how the people feel here, 1968 I was in Grenoble in this exact setting at the Olympic Arena, look at that, when Nancy Green picked up her gold medal in skiing. And the emotions are incredible, not only for the athletes. For Kona, who had the tying goal today, a nice goal, very important goal, being down 2-1 into the third period for Kona. That's Janicek. That's the Janicek, who played a lot during the year, but not in this tournament. Buzzy Schneider, Buzzy Schneider, a two-time Olympian. This is the second Olympics. Came out without a medal in 1976. A proud guy today. There's Bill Baker. Great goal against Sweden to tie it up. That great hit in the tremendous play that he had in the game against Czechoslovakia. Pavlik. He was the one we spotted in the crowd a little earlier, clapping away. Johnson just had an outstanding series. His father, a former Olympic coach in 1976. That's a very happy Johnson family. He talked about his mother and dad, and they're just ecstatic. They've devoted a lot to the United States Olympic program, both from a coaching and player standpoint. <laughs> he doesn't want to get off. He'll stay up there, of course. That's a Ruzzioni, the captain. So the 
team members now will go to their position at center ice. Now the several silver medals. Dretchak, Yusama Mihailov. There's Michigan, the goaltender of today's game. Makarov. See a lot of him in the next few Olympics. Golikov. Balderas. And you wonder, you know, what's going through their minds. You know, the domination of hockey, how they how they won uh, the, the Challenge Cup Series, how well they played World Championships. Alexander Maltsev, perhaps his last will be a silver medal. For, I, I know it will be his last. It's four years to the next one. Still cheering the U.S. here. As each and every member of the teams receives his medal. That's Petrov, also probably in his last Olympics. Valery Vasiliev. That's Vasiliev, yes. And there's one thing I have to mention about Vasiliev. When the United There's States Petrov. won the game, when the United States won the game, the first man over to shake their hands was Valery Vasilio. Great defenseman. That's slipped off there, just getting off the podium. There's Stretch Jack. Victor Kokoshkin, one of the translators for the team. Looks like they've had a rough go through the Olympic Games. The bruises, the cuts, the nicks in the faces of the players. Mihailov will get up on the podium now in the silver medal position. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. You blame them. <laughs> Doesn't happen every day. You work a long, long time to get that. Story Anderson, a veteran on the team. The backup goaltender for Sweden. <laughs> He's happy with the bronze. Look this. Olympic medal. Thomas Janssen will be with the Islanders perhaps next year. And Leif Holmgren plays in Stockholm. And Mats Maltin played in the Canada Cup. The captain, he's on the podium. He'll stay up there for the playing of the anthems. The national anthem of the gold medals of the United States of America. There we go.
has it all. He wants everybody up on the podium, the rest of them. Now, how are they going to put 20 hockey players up there? <laughs> it's like getting in a Volkswagen. They're going to get there, though. They're going to try. One squeezing in. Flash bulbs just going crazy. They're all the flash bulbs. They're number one. Gold medal, USA, silver medal, Soviet Union, bronze, Sweden. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Back at the Olympic Arena tonight where there will be more moments of emotion, moments of memories, as there is a figure skating exhibition and, of course, the closing ceremonies. Now we would like to show you the final medal count of these 13th Winter Games at Lake Placid. For the first time in Winter Games history, East Germany has beaten the Soviet Union in total medal count. East Germany has 23, Soviet Union 22, USA 12, Norway 10. In our second grouping, Finland 9, Austria 7, Liechtenstein, four, all from one family, the Wenzels of Liechtenstein. Holland has four. And in our third and final grouping, Switzerland has five, West Germany five, Sweden four, and we've put Canada in here for two, one silver from Steve Podborski, and one bronze. That's it for now from Lake Placid. We'll be back again tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time with a special skating exhibition. Goodbye for now. New York. Brought to you by ESSO, part of Canada's future for the past 100 years. By the Noranda Group of Companies. Noranda, like Canada's fine young Olympic athletes, we're proud to be Canadians competing worldwide. By American Express. Don't leave home without us. By Revlon, makers of cosmetics, fragrances, and hair care products. By Sunkist, if it doesn't say Sunkist on the outside, it can't be Sunkist on the inside. By AES, for increased office productivity. And by Molson, Canada's name in beer since 1787.